evolve yes. and worsen. So if you if you've got chlamydia, especially as a woman, um, and I don't want I don't want to worry people, but it, yeah. um, this, but if you have it for a very very long time, what happens? It lives it lives in it can live in a couple places. So first place it lives in, in your vaginal canal. So you get that's where that's why we do a swab. Then it can live go into your bladder. So when you go to the toilet, it may be painful when you pee. So it causes inflammation around there, comes out. It can mm-hmm. live on the outside of your cervix. So when you're having sex, you may get bleeding after sex. Right. Or, or, or spotting after sex. Mm-hmm. That could be a sign of infection. And then it can go into your, up into your womb, into your fallopian tubes. So yeah. inside your fallopian tubes, there's some stuff called cilia. It, it looks a bit like coral. And it brings your eggs down your fallopian tubes, kind of like mm-hmm. And it brings it when the egg comes out, it, it travels it travels it down your fallopian tube. What happens is that those um, cilia they get destroyed by the chlamydia, and then the egg gets stuck in the, in the fallopian tubes. So then, oh. when the sperm comes, it causes it can cause ectopic pregnancies. Ectopic pregnancies. Ah, yeah. okay. How's things going, my love? How they always go when I don't do the live at yours. Oh, you look nice though. Oh, I'm hot and bothered and just feel contracted. This was not the month to try. This was not the week to try a thing. <laughs> it wasn't the week. Contracted, child. So <laughs> let me just give a shout out to Mr. Oren from Proud and Gifted. It, it dropped me my new t-shirt today. Well, not today, at the barbecue. Oh, yeah, the barbecue. I'm waiting for mine. He said he's got mine. So shout out to Mr. Oram. Yes. Celebrate young people's achievements and doing great things out there. We're proud of you, sir. Um, and without further ado, let's, um, like, Scary's only going to be with us for an hour. So this is might be like a short show anyway. Um, plus it's football, blah, blah, blah. So Gary's waiting. We're going to talk to Gary about sexual health which is going to be really interesting. So what are you doing? I am, I left my other phone at work. (laughs) So I have got out the big contraption of a PC and I'm trying to monitor the Facebook. Right. (laughs) I'm just talking away and you're just, you're looking very beautiful in the screen, just gazing off. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? doing? I like your earrings, by the way. Oh, thank you. Part of the new collection. You can't really see them on screen. The beauty is in the per- in person. Yeah. Or part yeah. of the new collection. They're so, beautiful. Thank you. Come in silver and gold. And they'll be launched at Cupcakes and um, Cocktails, peeps. Yes. All right. So let's just yeah. admit Gary, because we've got him until nine. Okay. Yeah, he, he let us know from the off. Um, I'm not doing them for us. Don't try and do them marathon ones <laughs> in me, Bridget. Don't even try that. Hey. Hey, Gary. Hello. Hey, hey Natalie, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, sweetie. What's going on, Trisha? Good? Looking very slick. I like you the earrings that. and the hat. And the, yeah. proud, and gifted and the proud and gifted shirt. We can't <laughs> leave that out. <laughs> You know, I'm I was going to wear my blue one. Orange, boy. Huh? I was going to wear my blue one. I should have wear my blue yeah, one. Yeah, you should have. Yeah. <sighs> that way it's in the archives. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've invited you on today to talk about sexual health. Um, we've uh, How we usually do No Bravado is we put memes in the group. Because our, our community, like, it's small, but it's growing. But they're really interactive. They always post great things, and they always great, give great opinions. So we posted a couple of topics on sexual health in the group to see what their opinions were going to be. Um, and then we just wanted to do some myth busters. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen. We'll go through some questions and some of what our group has basically said. And just pick your brain for the time that we have you. <laughs> <laughs> So before we go into that, give us a little, introduce yourself, give us a little background as to who you are and what you do. So I'm Gary, I'm a sexual health advisor, a senior sexual health advisor, um, work across North East London. So basically what a sexual health advisor does, they manage SDIs. So if right. someone comes to my service with an infection, we manage that and we follow a process, get the person treated, 
if they need support around the STI, whatever STI is, we support them. And then we do what we call partner notification. So then we will, if the person didn't want to tell their partner about the infection, we would contact the partner and discuss it with the partner about the infection and how they need to be treated. And we don't tell people like, oh, your partner had an infection. We just said someone you slept with in the last six months has tested positive for an infection. Um, we need to bring you in to get for treatment or to get a, get a test. And then we manage, huh? I said, ouch. Yeah. Imagine getting that call from the clinic Ooh. and not your partner that you slept with in the last six months. But yeah, go on. Yeah, but I mean, and then um, we also manage anyone who's under 18 who comes to the clinic. So like rentable young people under 16, 15, they'll come to, they'll be assessed by someone like myself first or one of my team first and then put through. If we have to make a safeguarding referral for whatever reason, we do that. Vulnerable adults, if they've got a mental health issue, they come and see us. So anybody vulnerable um, mm -hmm. and coming in with like an SDI or have issues around sex and relationships, they come to us and we see us. And then we refer them to either a nurse or doctor to do treatment or we would um, assess them on other, other things. Okay. Cool. So, all right, let's go into the slideshow. Because I know I'm I got a slideshow, you know. How come I didn't get these questions before? You should have sent me these questions before. <laughs> like I've gone through and said, yeah. It's nothing, it's nothing, um, it's nothing to worry about as such. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. We're not asking you your personal business. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but do you like our little thumbnail that we've done for you? Looking yeah, I, yeah that, that, that picture. I don't like that picture. Though. I've never, I've never been keen on that picture, but hey, it's oh, all no. Really? Yeah, it I bit. said, send me a picture that you like. You said, get anyone off of Facebook. Anyone, anyone, anyone Facebook. We picked the work. most dapper one. You don't like it. Okay, okay, okay. Of course, why? I mean, <laughs> like I'm, like I'm, I, don't, I don't always look like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So... Right, so this is one of the questions that I put in the group, yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, I asked, when interested in sleeping with... Hang on, I've got to move you off my... Yeah, when, when interested in sleeping with a new partner, do you ask a sexual, for an ex sexual health check up before the act or do you just wait until the subject comes up naturally? So I'll go back to, the, I'll go back to the, what the member said. But in your opinion, what's the best time to bring that question up? Well, I mean, if you're going to be having sex with somebody, ask them, ask them, well, use a condom until you are confirmed in a, in a serious relationship and you've had a discussion. So mm. that would be my opinion, but people work differently. So if you've, if you've asked, if you're going to be sleeping with somebody, you should ask them, have you had a checkup? When was your last checkup? The problem with that is, it's quite, which is quite funny, is people come to my office regularly. Right. Oh, yeah. I've spoken to somebody. I had sex with someone and um, the condom came off and I'm like, okay. And they're like, yeah, I need to get a, a test. So we have a conversation. And I said, did you ask the person if they said, yeah, I asked them and they said no, but no one believes them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's kind of on you. If, you. if you don't believe what the person is telling you, if you don't know a person, you're not necessarily going to believe if they say to you they've had a checkup or not. And lots of yeah. people, lots of people, and this goes for men and women, all say they've had a checkup, but haven't. Because once you're there, you're kind of doing what you want to do. And it's like, yeah, if I say no, then it's not, not going to happen. So I'll just say yes. And then the yeah. person has an infection, they get chlamydia or gonorrhea or syphilis or whatever infection, and then they move back. Right. Anything you want to say then, that? Yeah, <laughs> that I'm just, just horrified. Like, obviously, you'd want to ask sometimes to, i don't know you'd want to ask but i can imagine it being an absolute mood killer well do you know, the, thing, the thing what makes me laugh about it if i said to people <laughs> if you're going to have sex with somebody was. and you can't talk to them about sex <laughs> what's that about that yeah. yeah yeah so, yeah. so you, should, you should be i mean don't get me wrong people i've said people do things in the spur of the moment and then they're in a situation where they kind of think about what they've done and what it could lead to and then they take action but mm -hmm. if you've spoken to, and i mean if someone you spoke to someone they said oh i had a test last week and it was negative then they should be worried about you you shouldn't be worried about them mm -hmm. uh, when was when was your last test that, i think that was be my thing and i say to people whenever they come clinic when, when was your last test oh two years ago three years ago yeah mm -hmm. and i always say to people you should really have a test 
when you finish your relationship with somebody, you should have a test. And when before you start a new relationship, you should have a test. A test, yeah. Going forward. Yeah. Standard. Yeah. yeah. But people don't. People don't want to go, especially guys, don't want to go to clinic because they get all these myths about what's going to happen when you go into a clinic. This mm. happens, there's umbrellas, there's this, that, and the other. Like, that was we we did have a myth buster section, so okay. we'll we'll come to that at some point okay. because it is trying to dispel the myths to um get people to be more comfortable with their sexual health. So mm-hmm. this is what some of our um members said. Um, the general consensus was that yes, we should go get tested together. It should be a must," said Negus. Mm-hmm. Um. Tia said, I asked straight out. That yeah. moment of pleasure can bring you a lifetime of health problems. Now, yeah. can you read what Yankee said? Yeah, Yankee, Daryl Nelson Cole said, personally, I feel like you're taking the piss. What do I look like? And believe me, I'm almost definitely <laughs> ain't attracted to women who look loose. Uh, sorry. I think yeah. if you have something or just got rid of something, then yes, you better declare it. But if not it if not is your business if you have been to prison in the past many years ago do you tell your new partner that he'll know unless it comes up just my thoughts i think think he meant hell no unless it comes up so he's basically right so he's basically saying that it's rude to ask look we're all at no, go for it. Sorry. Go for it, no. we're, we're all adults. Like we're all adults. Now, if you're looking at me, you're telling me we can't have a conversation. I can't ask you a question, right? You get vexed. What kind of part of are you? <laughs> Just like, yeah. don't want to date you. But as I said to people, people have their own hang-ups about relationships and sexual. You, like he was saying, oh, what do I look like? What's looking like got anything to do with it? Most yeah. most sexually transmitted infections in, in lots of cases do not have any signs or symptoms. Mm-hmm. So... What's the point? You can yeah. have chlamydia for years and not know you've got it. You can have gonorrhea and not know you've got it. Right. So I thought gonorrhea showed up, so it doesn't show up. That's a myth well, right there. Well, gonorrhea. Hang so, on, well, I'll go back to the share in a minute. Yeah. yeah. So basically, gone we've got a rear, we've got a rear, gonorrhea and chlamydia. Mm-hmm. 70% of women have no signs of symptoms, and 50% of guys have no signs of symptoms. You're more likely to get symptoms with gonorrhea than you are with chlamydia, but there's no guarantee you're going to get symptoms. Right. And if you do get symptoms, it will it will happen in the first two weeks. Right. So right. If, I, if someone comes someone comes to me at my clinic and they've got symptoms, when I do contact tracing, I will only go back two weeks. I don't need to go back months and months and months. So it's be somewhere it'll be in the last two weeks that you've had sex, usually. Oh, wow. So if, you, if you're going to get symptoms, it'll be the first couple of weeks. If you don't get symptoms of that, you probably will never get symptoms. Right. Right. Yeah, what, when I mean symptoms, you won't get a discharge. You won't be, when you go to the toilet, it won't be painful when you pee. So there's like no that. real way to know unless you check. Unless you, unless you do a check. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Right. I, and as well, sorry, the bit where he said, um, and if they ask me, it's not your business, kind of is. <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> at, at this point. <laughs> When we're in that position, it's definitely my business at that point. This guy, I know him personally and I, I really like him. But when I read that, I was like, what are you saying? You can't tell. And I actually responded and said that you can't tell if someone has an STD or if they're loose just by looking at them. His response was, and he's not the only person I've heard say that. I've um, spoken to guys that have got like lots of kids and they've all said, I choose well. I know that the women that I sleep with don't have it. And so far I've been, I've been blessed. I've not caught no diseases. You, so. the, the, the funny thing about that. And I they are the people, lucky ones, right? Not, not even that. Know, you know, most, people, most people would have come in contact with an STI. If you step with three people, you have, prob- I'm guarantee you, you have come in contact with an SDI. You may not have actually caught the SDI, but you've definitely come in contact. What do you mean? Because it's, I don't say, if you don't use a condom with somebody, you're kind of sleeping with anyone they've not used a condom with, condom with, if you're looking at that point of view. So if you, if you've only slept with one person and the person you slept with, this person you slept with has only slept with one, say you slept with, this is the first guy you slept with is today. But that person, the guy you slept with, slept with, say, two people. But each of those two people slept with six people and not use condoms. You're sleeping with all their ex-partners. 
So it doesn't take much to catch an infection. It doesn't, I've said it comes, I've, people come to my clinic, I've had sex once and I've got chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, syphilis on the yeah. first time. You know I mean, I, mean I, I think a couple of years, I do part of my role, I run the outreach service for my service. And we, we did a festival, of, we do quite a lot of festivals. So at one of the festivals, this girl came in, did a test, uh, HIV test, but it's, um, we sent it off. When it came back, it came back positive. So when I was doing contact, talking to her about it, she was from Bristol. She came down to London, to Bristol, and we were speaking, and she had no discernible risk factors. When I went through, um, her and her partner, but her, both her and her partner tested positive. Um, so he's, his partner, some of his partners, all these partners, his contractors were negative. So it could have come from her. And she said that she hasn't, she's only slept with like three guys. And I say she's like 29 or 30 at the time, three guys. And she doesn't know where she got it from. But she did say what made me laugh. Oh, her ex-boyfriend was a pathological liar. <laughs> so, she right. like, <laughs> yeah. so she doesn't, but she couldn't get hold of him and stuff like that. So we, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like you're sleeping around with somebody. All it is, is kind of, that one person, that person you've had sex with, if they haven't done a check, you could be positive for anything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, let's just check in with some of our members. Um, Agnes is watching. Hey, Agnes. Hey, Alison. Hi. Hello, Alison. Hey, Ollie. Holly. Hey, Sammy Joe's watching. Hey, Sammy. Our producer is watching, obviously. <laughs> she produces the show. Um, <laughs> hey, Emma. <laughs> Um, hey Charlene, there's some other people watching, but I can't see who they are yet. Well, that is interesting. You know, imagine having sex for the first time and then ended up with HIV. That's really that unfortunate. Was... Yeah, yeah it, is, it is. It is. I mean, are there um, many cases like that? Nah, the, the, the okay. rate of H, the rate of HIV from vaginal sex is quite low in the UK. Probably about one in six hundred thousand, something like that. Okay. Um, you know? depending, depending what type of sex you have, the more risk you have of um, passing HIV. So, um, for a man who's having sex with, so if a woman has HIV and a man has sex with her, he's less mm -hmm. likely to catch it. He's more likely to give it to a woman than the other way around. You can be passed both ways, but it's more likely. It's, le it's a lower risk factor. But if a man is having anal sex with another man, they, um, the person he's giving sex to is more likely to catch HIV. I see. But in saying that, there's a medication we give we give people now that will prevent people catching HIV anyway. So, but I'm sure. We can really, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know there yeah. was preventative medicine for yeah, that. Yeah. So there's a thing called PrEP and PEP. PrEP mm -hmm. is pre and PEP is post. Right. Um, so basically, if if you're a, a man that's actually man or in a high risk relationship or you've got um, things, you can take this medication. So the best way for me to explain it from a woman, from a, from a woman's perspective, will make more sense. It's a bit like an emergency contraception and contraception. So with right. contraception, you take it every single day, mm -hmm. to stop you from getting pregnant. And emergency contraception, you take it afterwards to stop yourself from getting pregnant. So with prep, with prep, P R E P, pre, um, you take it before you have sex, and right. it will stop someone from you stop you from catching HIV. Right. If you if you have if you've had sex with somebody and the condom breaks and you meet certain risk factors, then we will give you PEP, which is post, and that will stop. And you take it for twenty eight days, and it should mm -hmm. stop the transmission of HIV. Wow. Whichever, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But for example, if you come in, if you you've got to be certain high risk categories to get those medications. So if you're a man that sleeps with another man, you're more likely to get it than someone who's had unprotected sex with a woman or a girl that's having sex with a man. Unless you've been sexually assaulted, then we offer it to you. We may not recommend it to you, but we offer it to you. So is this like common knowledge or is this just me and Trisha that doesn't know this? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you're, it's something that's common knowledge in the for people who use it or, mm -hmm. or you need the medication. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's common knowledge. If you go on most sexual health websites, you'll see people, um, they'll give you information about it. And also if you have HIV, Mm -hmm. and and your partner has HIV we put them on medication and once right. you've got your medication we can get the viral load so low that they can't pass it on to you so it becomes oh, undetectable wow. so then you can't give it to anybody else so even if you have the infection okay yeah. 
Okay, so that's obviously slowed the, the risk of that. Yeah, yeah. So HRV, yeah. Levels, HRV levels are coming right down. Uh, coming all the way down, if, yeah. If you, but the problem is, is in some certain communities, they're not testing. So you don't know you're, you don't know you're an infection to mm. be able to be on medication to stop you passing it on to someone else. And what communities is that? Um, African communities, um, South, kind of Southern African communities, um, yeah, the gay men's society, they kind of know everything about everything and take it full advantage. But those are kind of like more high risk groups that are not accessing things like PrEP and stuff. So we've got campaigns in most sexual health clinics about mm -hmm. encouraging more people from African communities to test and getting them onto medication as soon as possible. Also, lots of people come to, who, because how sexual health clinics are, are set up is with my clinic, we've got upstairs that does general sexual health and then the, the downsides department does. Um, HIV. Right. Lots of people have HIV. We get them medication and they just stop taking the medication because they feel healthy and they're living healthy lives. They think, oh, I'm, I'm cured now and they stop taking it. It's really important that people come every what, three months to get their medication and keep on taking it. Right. Is that for life? Yeah, you take it for life. So, so it's, life. A bit, it's a bit like managing um, diabetes. Diabetes. Now. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Kind, of, kind of like if you take, if you're on PrEP, or if you're on the HIV medication for RADA, then you're good. Mm. You're good. Okay. Why is it do you, that you think that the um, African community, the take-up is so low of testing? Oh, it's, that's the thing with the whole, with all, with all kind of communities, vulnerable communities, it's kind of not a, not the acknowledgement of something. It's a bit like I, throughout the pandemic, I've been doing a lot of COVID stuff. For work mm. i've been like doing so they've kind of took me out of the job i do and be asked me to do lead on covid response and when you talk to people about medication and stuff like that people just get really oh and it's mostly people from ethnic minorities that, that i've got issues with grandma mm. told me i can take two lemon and honey and i'll be good if i sniff through garlic i think chris it's like that type of med mentality and you kind of got to break through that with people okay i'm laughing because that's just been my whole attitude towards corona Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, she even she even bought me corona juice when i had it <laughs> corona be gone corona juice, be gone juice. <laughs> she slipped it through my window <laughs> so that's the thing about it people take me when they talk about those like, it's when people talk about medication and stuff and i i working in the health profession i really laugh because people say to me oh i don't want to take this medication because I don't know what's in it. But you don't know what's in any of the medication. I don't see none of you reading the back of the boxes reading what's in it. So it's kind of, it's, I, do find it, I do find it funny. But we're talking about sex, so we're around with the sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll go back to my little slideshow, because we do love a slideshow at Low Bravado. Um, so we read these comments. Mm -hmm. um, but I was... I oh, was one thing I'll say to you, one, sorry, one thing I will say to you, we call it STIs. I mean, you said STDs earlier. They're actually infections. They're not diseases. And the, okay. the main difference, the main difference is you can't give someone a disease. So if you think about cancer, cancer is a disease. I can't give you cancer, but I right. can give you an infection. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So just okay. so, look at that. So I mean, just, it's, I know it's most a lot of people call it diseases, but they they are really infections. Right. Yeah that's good to, it's, it, as you break it down like that yeah i think from i'm from old school so it was always yeah. stds and it's just yeah, kind yeah. of up. but it yeah stays in mind. but i'm just yeah. well, that's, that's not knocking anyone to saying that when you think about it people just well you when you meet when you hear me saying stis that's why i'm mm -hmm. saying it yeah. yeah no it makes sense yeah. makes um, sense so like i said the general consensus of the group was you should get checked someone mm -hmm. said i usually wait until the subject of sex comes up whenever that is um, someone said, talk to them and see if the lies are obvious. Better to be safe than sorry. What's, a, what's an obvious lie? I don't know. <laughs> We've got some cynical ass people in this group when they're ready. They think everything is a lie. So, yeah. <laughs> when they're ready. So I guess about telling truth about sexual history and stuff like that. Um, Emma said, we'll get tested together. Um, Ian gave a really honest answer and he said lust has a way of getting into get lust is a way of getting in the way of practicalities. Simple. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um Colette said, of course, of course, and not only that, a full background check. 
Um, K. Marie said, I'm too old to play Russian roulette. <laughs> um, Roger said, I get tested every year as standard, not just sexual health, but overall. I only have one life and I want um, the best quality available. It's only right I'm with someone who values themselves the same way. I agree. Um, yeah. Ian came back and said, I once said to a nurse in my 20s, um, I don't need to get tested, I'm faithful. And she turned to me and said, speak for yourself, not your partner. Always get yourself tested. Standard. I tell people that already. I say people, any, especially when I talk to younger people, like we had a 14-year-old come in the clinic and talking about their partner. Yeah. And I said, and I said to her, I said to her, no, just bit, but when you, when you meet a boy, he'll say these things to you. Oh, I've never even seen a girl before. What's a girl? You're the only girl I love, Ben. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And if you're going to take that as gospel, you're silly. Look mm. after yourself. Yeah. You know, use condoms and things for yourself. Don't use it for your partner. Use it for yourself. Use a femidon for yourself. Mm. If your man said to him, put a condom on, use a femidon. Nothing yeah. stops you. They're actually, they're actually safer than condoms. Femidons are? Yeah. Okay. I would ask if they're uncomfortable, but I don't suppose you'd know. <laughs> yeah, so, so they're not. <laughs> From what I think, they're not. So when you, yeah. how you, am I on mute? No. no. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> on, um, I, 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 well, I may go up my bag and see if I've got one in my bag. But it, how, do you, how they've got a, like a little rubber ring in it. So when mm -hmm. the woman's, in the woman's vaginal canal, there's no nerve endings in that bit. Actually, once you're inside, there's no nerve endings. So once you squeeze the femidon and pull it in, it just pops in and sits by the cervix. And then the right. bag fits it's sitting outside, so it's not uncomfortable. It's a bit awkward to use if you don't want to use it. Um, mm -hmm. But they, they're, they, because they're, they're bigger than condoms, they give you slightly uh, more protections against things like genital warts and herpes. Right, yeah, because that was... One of my questions was about genital warps um, because my thing is, <clears throat> I don't get how, what I was saying to you, I don't get how it's spread because if you go to sleep with someone and they're up, you're obviously not going to sleep with them. So mm -hmm. somewhere along the line, people must be having sex, not realising they're at risk and then catching it. Yeah, so Can you break down how that happens? So, depend, so genital warts and herpes are two different things, but they kind of both happen from skin to skin contact. So lots of people have warts in places they don't actually know they've got them. So they may be between the anus or bits of places they can't really notice. Uh, so they, when you come in contact with them, then you pass it to one person the other way. So another, word, another thing for genital warts, and it shouldn't be much people having it now, younger people having it now, because it, in other words, it's HPV. So a lot of girls know about HPV. Yeah. So because... Um, depending on what borough you live in, with your HPV vaccination, there's the one that protects against cervical cancer, but there's another one called Gardasil that also protects against genital warts. Okay. So, so if you're on, um, yeah, so that's how, but it's, uh, we, we had a conversation about um, herpes earlier. So the, just before you get the actual source, we do this thing what we call shredding, when you start to shed the virus, and that's when it's contagious. Right. If you have the virus, if you have outbreaks of genital warts all, all regularly, your oh sorry not genital warts, so herpes regularly, you will, you most people can tell when they're going to happen. So it, you you feel a bit run down. Your um, the virus breaks out. So there's two types: um, type one, which is cold sores, and type two, which is genital herpes. Right. Most people in England, men and women, have the virus. So all most people have the virus. Even you, you if you've had sex, you've probably got the virus. But if you think about it like um, like a f the flu, so everyone's got the flu virus in their body, but you right. don't have symptoms, but you don't have symptoms. You don't have, you don't have a runny nose, but you get treatment for the flu once you've got the runny nose. And that's the same thing with uh, herpes. You've got the right. virus until you have an outbreak, nobody, we don't worry about it. So right. when you have a outbreak, that's when we test, and we're testing to see if it's what, if it's type one or type two. Now, so if you, if you had genital herpes tomorrow, it broke out tomorrow, then we did test it. You couldn't say it was your last boyfriend who gave it to you or someone you slept with recently. It could have been any of your old previous partners. No. Like, just been, like, yeah, it could, be, it could have been anybody, and it's just laid dormant. Just laid dormant. Yeah, so most people, most people have the virus <laughs> in their body. So you're not going to think... So if you've had a cold sore, you've got... You've had a cold sore, you've got her herpes, the virus. But you just don't have symptoms most of the time. 
most people will never have an outbreak. Okay. Then some people, some people will have one outbreak. They will have one outbreak that be really bad, and they will never have another outbreak. Then, okay. So, sorry. So if you look at about ninety-eight percent of the population has herpes, that three or four percent of them will have an outbreak. Out of the three or four percent, one percent of the three or four percent will have a second outbreak more than one outbreak and then maybe less than one percent of those would have continuous outbreaks and most people get it when their bodies run down they're stressed out and then it pops out so you get lots of like university students and we're going around exam times with cold sores or stress and that's when it breaks out so most people who get that will get it around that time okay. so then we'll we give you some treatment for it um it doesn't go away it will, it will soothe the, it will soothe it for a little while and then it goes away and then you can have sex with it one question I think so, someone always asks me is, oh, if I've got herpes, whenever you, people come to the clinic, they'll, I forgot, do I have to tell my partner? I said, it's your choice. You don't have to, you can, you don't have to, but it's your choice. Don't, obviously, if you're having an outbreak, don't have sex. But if you're not having an outbreak, say, you wouldn't tell your partner, I've got a cold. I've got the cold virus in my body. Just say it's thing now. Right. Mm. That's right. deceptive. <laughs> I've got the cold virus in my body that yeah. might cause you sores around your penis. Like, no, nah, um, <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Like, no, nah, it's not right. All right, let's move through some more of this stuff. Sorry, I was just gonna say, can it um, evolve into into, in, into anything else? Because I know, are there any sexually transmitted diseases that can kind of start off tame and kind of? evolve yes. and worsen so if you if you've got chlamydia especially as a woman um and i don't want i don't want to worry people but it, yeah. um this but if you have it for a very very long time what happens it lives, it lives in it can live in a couple places so first place it lives in, in your vaginal canal so you get that's where you, that's where we do a swab then it can live go into your bladder so when you go to the toilet it may be painful when you pee so it, it causes inflammation around there comes out it can live on the outside of your cervix. So when you're having sex, you may get bleeding after sex. Right. Or, or, or spotting after sex. Mm -hmm. That could be a sign of infection. And then it can go into your, up into your womb, into your fallopian tubes. So yeah. inside your fallopian tubes, there's some stuff called cilia. It, it looks a bit like coral. And it brings your eggs down your fallopian tubes. Kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And it brings it when the egg comes out, it, it travels it travels it down your fallopian tube. What happens is that those um, cilia they get destroyed by the chlamydia, and then the egg gets stuck in the, in the fallopian tube. So then, oh, when okay. the sperm comes, it causes it can cause ectopic pregnancies. Ectopic pregnancies. Ah, yeah. okay. Right. So that can happen. I mean, it's very rare, but it can happen. But it can happen. It can, it can happen. Okay. Yeah, can happen. So chlamydia could be a reason why. That has happened so that's why we always recommend people do tests regularly and yeah. also if you have chlamydia um when you're pregnant if you give birth while you've got chlamydia then chlamydia can get in the baby's eye and then the baby can get born be born blind really oh yeah can it have eye problems and stuff yeah or you yeah, I knew about or, that or you get um sperm if you get but if you've got sperm in your finger chlamydia and touch your eye you can get chlamydia in your eye Quite rare, but then you may have to go to Moorfields to get antibiotics to um, sort you out. imagine? I've got yeah. chlamydia in my eye. Oh, I would want to die. But I want to know, why are you touching your, your sperm hand, your eye with your sperm hand, please? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty. Oh, dear. Yeah, I knew that. So it doesn't have the same effects on men, knowing they're serious. It, it does. It does have the same effects. So basically, it can make their testicles swell up really big. So the, um, it can go into your penis. It goes go around your sperm ducts, and then once it gets in, once it gets in there, it can cause problems and make your testicles get swell and, and problems and stuff. Did you say it explode? Can, it, it, not explode. It makes them get big and it really painful and really go. And also, it can lead to things like um, arthritis and stuff like that. Oh wow! Yeah, but if you okay. live for long, that's a yeah. Wow. But as I said, most people, when we talk to people about infections, I mean, these these are extremes. Like I mm -hmm. said to people, it's, I know sometimes you'll see pictures of people's infections, and uh, there's all like gender talks, and you see tons and tons of warts all over the place, all over person's being. Yeah. Really and truly, most of the people who have warts that haven't got access to treatment or have some type of mental health issue. Because once okay. you see, 
it's a bit like pubic life. We talk about pubic life when I do stuff in schools. Mm-hmm. I said it can live. It can live in your pubic area. It can live if you're a man or woman who got hair in your chest. It can live in your chest there. It can live in your moustache and it can live in your eyebrows, but it can't live in your head. So, but I said to the kids in school, if you let pubic hair get to your chest or to your, you've got issues in it. <laughs> you see them moving around. I didn't even know there was. Pubic, I didn't even know there was pubic lice, and I mean, that's a bit it's, like it's, you don't know that. No, this is stressful like, stuff. Like there's so much <laughs> pubic lice, you know. So they now they want like to be like Yeah, it's like head lice, but it's um yeah, yeah pubic pubes. Head, yeah. Can you still catch pubic lice if you shaved all your pubes off? Yeah. So what? Okay. Do, so with the lice, what they do is they lay eggs under your skin. So they let their babies under your skin, so they've got when you poop they just go back up. You'll see them. You can see them. Like, like, people, if you're in a bath or something, you'll see them floating in a bath with like little kind of that face. I love <laughs> a bath. <laughs> you can't do that in a bath. You can't do that in a bath. And then your like... eggs just floating by. Like, the, uh, like, your little, little black thing. It's going to be celibate thing. for the rest of our lives. <laughs> But if, yeah. if, if, I mean, if you've got children and you've seen, you've seen them, you've seen nits in their hair, it's the same thing, but you just get them in the gen Okay. So what age group does that tend to affect? I would imagine... Anybody, really, anybody. Really? anybody yeah, anybody. Oh, um, higher yeah. in certain it's, age groups. Yeah, anybody. I mean, if chlamydia and gonorrhea, chlamydia and gonorrhea, oh, sorry, chlamydia, uh, most people, you're more likely to get chlamydia between the ages of 15 to 24. That's kind of uh, like the high um, demographic. Okay, yeah. So about they reckon about one in, 50, one in 15 sexually active young people has chlamydia. About one in 15. If you live in certain areas, if you live in Harringay, I think it's about one in 10, one in eight. If you live in Hackney, it's one in eight. If you live in Lambeth, Suffolk and Lewisham, I think it goes down to about one in four, one in five. Wow. Sexually active. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean everyone has it, but their yeah, rates are quite high. So it yeah. depends, well, that, oh, actually, okay. that, that was a couple of years ago. I haven't actually looked at the figures recently, but there was quite, but nationally wide, it's about one in 15, one in 16 people. Okay. Oh, we've only got you for 15 more minutes. Do you know what I said? I can, I can go outside in the car. I can go outside and do it in the car. I think I'll just sing the, I can just sing the, in, in okay, the room. Okay, Paul, because we've got some questions. <laughs> and the more you talk, it's the more I'm like, oh my God. Hang on. All right, I'm not going to bother read these comments. So we'll go on to the next um yeah this conversation is a very very good and strong and i think effective contraception tool because i think this conversation is a very effective (laughs) and strong contraception tool (laughs) (laughs) because there's pubic lice didn't know about that you know what I knew about pubic lice. You know what? The funny thing I about used to it, work I, in a sexual health clinic as well, so that's yeah. why I... Wait, I, 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 I so wait, wait, um, step forward. But, yeah. um, I said again, I, you know what I should have had done? I should, I've done, I've, I'm not on this laptop. I've got a thing where I do with young people and I've got like a presentation. I had like pictures of pubic lice, like little ones. And then I've got pictures of like TV and other infections, like swimming, swimming around under the microscope and stuff like that. I should have, um, let you look at those or yeah, showed you those. Yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take, take your word for it. <laughs> I've got a question. Um, Sammy Joe wants to know, is it uncomfortable for the man when sleeping with someone who's wearing a femidon? No. So it's basically, it's got like, lubric- it's really lubricated, lu- usually really lubricated. Um, yeah. And they're, they're quite big. So usually um, they, some people find them quite more, actually more comfortable. Okay. Yeah, some people do, but some people don't. Some people yeah, don't. So this, yeah, just it, it, yeah, it's not at all. They're, they're really big. So if you if you can use a condom, then you can use a femidon. And also femidon condoms are made out of latex. Most of them are made out of latex. Yeah. But femidons are made out of polyurethane, so they're less likely to make you allergic to them or have any reaction. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. All right. So our producer, our um, Michelle, posted this question. Um, she said, this Tuesday, Natalie and Trisha are talking with, to, talking all things sexual health with our guest speaker. And then it, she basically showed a clip of um, this gentleman. It's a, a program called Insecure. Yeah, I love it, and love it, love it. Love, love, love Insecure, it. right. Yeah, yeah. So you remember when he broke up with Issa and he, he got yeah. buck wild and then he caught chlamydia, so he had to make the calls. Yeah. So the question was, would you be able to make a phone call to inform previous partners you may have given them an STI or how would you react if you received one of these calls? 
So let me stop the Ooh. share. What, let me stop the share there. So <laughs> I'm, I don't know, because I don't, we've been dubbed the entrapment twins and I don't know why we've got this reputation. So I don't want to ask you your personal business, but generally, is that a hard phone call for people to make? Or do you think people are mature about it? Or Some people, some, uh, um, two, no, a couple months ago during lockdown, yeah. a man come, uh, one of the guys who works, works under me came up to me and started speaking to me. And I was like, he said to me, oh, Gary, this patient's come in and they've got 39 partners. I said, what, during lockdown? He goes, yeah, in the last couple of weeks, whatever. So he's given, he's got um, syphilis and, he, and he's given me a list of these partners to contact. I was like, listen, tell him to do it himself, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> listen. Yeah, 39. We, 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 I said, you could do like the most recent ones, but see the ones from before? He's taking a mick. And he yeah. came in with a list. He gave him a list of all the partners he slept with their phone numbers. If you've got that, yeah, phone them yourself. But 39 my, girlfriends or partners. entanglements. <laughs> Partners, I think he was a man that speaks to his other man. I think he's a gay man. But as okay. I said to somebody, as I said to somebody, a part of our role is to phone a contact partner. So if you don't want to do it, we do a, we do a thing called partner notification. So for example, just you you slept with me, and um, I gave you an I and I find I've got I've got an infection, and I don't want you to know. So what I do is I will talk to someone like um, another health advisor. He can either do it two ways. They can phone up you and say oh someone you slept with in the last six months you you'll say oh you can see like our phone in from i don't know like east london you'd be like ah oh, the only person i know from east london is gary blah 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 right or, or what i can do is what we call a provider referral so i phone somewhere like i don't know edinburgh scotland and get a health advisor from edinburgh scotland to phone you to say hey someone you slept with in the last six months has said blah 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 you'd be like i would so yeah, so you can't actually trace where it's there from London, whatever it is. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, if you know who you slept with in the last six months, you know who that is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So when we done like a little call, you told me something about someone avoiding the hell out of telling their partner. Is that something you could share here or not? Yeah, yeah I could share. Yeah, I could share it. So we, right. it was, we was, I was talking about. Um, so a person came into clinic one day and he, um, they tested positive for chlamydia. So I was like, oh, you need to tell your partner. He was giving, oh, don't, don't want to tell her, man. She's going to kill me, rare tan rugs, done a bit, of, a bit like an idiot. So I kept on calling him and he didn't, um, he didn't, he wouldn't give me his partner's deal. So I just closed him. So after we gave him treatment, you've got to wait a few weeks after treatment. Um, you've got to wait, go, after we've given you treatment for an infection, we have to wait seven days before we can have sex again. Um, but with certain infections, the infection is dead, but it's, it leaves a marker in your urine or whatever we do. It leaves a marker, so we've got to do a, we do a test. So basically, after a couple of weeks, I think it's about five weeks, I called this patient in who um, um, called this patient in, and she got as a woman, she got up and she came in, but she came in with someone behind her. But when you come into my room, I always tell your partners to stand outside just because people don't, are not as free as they want to be right. when their partner's in. So, um, but so I said, oh, you got to stay outside. But I looked at the, I looked at the guy and I think, I know your face, but I couldn't remember where I couldn't place him. So mm -hmm. he came inside. So when I went on to her records, because she said, no, please, he, he's here to support me. I saw that she said, I said, you've got chlamydia. She was talking. And then she said, um, <laughs> she, she, she goes to me, oh, so the, when I realised what you had, I realised, oh, I saw you, it's you I saw a couple of weeks ago. But obviously, because my service is confidential, I can't say, oh, you was in a few weeks ago. I was like, oh. so we were talking and she said she's got chlamydia. So she had never slept with no one. She's only slept with this guy ever oh, in the last two, three years, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, oh, how did I get it? I said, well, you slept with somebody. She goes, oh, but he's negative. So what my man done was he did the test afterwards. After he was treated, he got a negative test. No. And then... <laughs> I said, Treasury, so you there, know. <laughs> she's there barley in the office. Like, no. That's mean, man. She's <laughs> saying, oh, I've never stepped with the one. Do you believe me? And he's like, he said to her, which I looked at was like, our, our babes, whatever it is, we, I can forgive you. I can, we can work, we can work no. through it. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I was like, I'd, I'd laugh. I was like, <laughs> I looked at him like saying, are you doing this, brother? For real? Are you 
You're going to leave her there to do this. You're doing this. So I'm sitting there, my mouth open. And I'm like, he's talking to me. So she's like, well, is there any way I could get it? How would I get it? Did I? I said, you had to have slept with somebody. Like, she goes, but I've only slept with him. I said, well, and she's like, no. yeah, but he's negative. <laughs> but he's negative. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Oh no. so he's, and he left he's, her there to think that he's, he's looking at me like say brother shut up shut up yeah keep it with <laughs> i'm looking like so as as she goes at the office i said look it's the most important thing is that you've been treated now and you've got ready and I said well you just need to use condoms even mm -hmm. with even with your even with your regular partners use condoms and then she was like brought the, left the office crying he's saying stroking her like yeah baby we, oh we he's work a wanker, through this. sorry <laughs> So as you as you as you walked out as you walked out <laughs> as you walked out, I oh, kind of put my done. foot by the door to kind of block him, like me. And he looked at me and just smiled and winked. And I was like, I'm saying he winked at you. He winked. He's like smiled. He's kind of like like I looked at him. I was like, brother, but you ain't. I ain't got back in your your talk, you know. But obviously, because if it's confidential, I can't say, oh, your partner's coming. Or I can't just. Yeah, it was quite trickery. funny. People are yeah, fuming in the chat. Scary, uh, messed up man. Oh my <laughs> God. Out of all the bastard. Unbelievable. <laughs> it totally is unbelievable. It is. The lengths that people will do mind tricks on you just to make you think it's you and, and not take responsibility. Well, no, no, it, 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 no ladies. <laughs> no, man. It's the fuckery no. for me. <laughs> yeah. Totally. <laughs> the, the, the thing about it, which I laughed yeah. about, was like he... He could have just said, it's me, blah, 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 I messed up. Or even, he could have, I mean, a lot of people say things like, you know what, I didn't do a test. Like, some dog goes, oh, my partner said he did the test, but now he said he did, um, he got chlamydia, and he said he didn't do a test when we first met. So could I have it that long? I said, yeah, possible. He probably slept with someone else in the meanwhile, but that's the argument he's given her. So he put off saying something like that, and then making the poor girl think that she had it. This was a few years ago. Yeah. But I said, people, people come in with some weird stories like i said to people when people talk to me about sex now i don't think if someone says oh i slept with a dragon it wouldn't surprise me because people are really do some really things that i may not think of. um see people's sexual preferences are kind of so varied and mm. do so much different things it's quite a thing so yeah, yeah. Th th them guys are weird but i mean it was a bit out of order but He's done just what he's done. A, a bit, you think? A bit. Listen, <laughs> but I wanted to share the screen so we could go on to Davina's comment. Read it out for me, please, Nat. Where's Davina's comment? Um, ah, Davina Jones. Yeah. She said, when I... So she's replying to you, right? Mm. Um, yeah. And she said, yeah, when I've had relations, I would check and let them know even before we do the thing. And after, as the, that way, you can't even try and get out of it and say it was me. That's a good one. Yeah. Not that I sleep about, but some men try it. But I'm covert, and you know, what is it? I'm covered, and um, you know it. Yeah. That is still with protection, too. That's the thing about it. I mean, protection, I mean, condoms. Condoms, I think. I mean, you've got so many different types of condoms and stuff like that. Um, I don't You, you've got condoms like this. Hang on, let me stop the share. We'll go back to it so I can see it properly. So we can see it properly. So you've got condoms like this. All right. So the they're, they're kind of, yeah, they're kind of like, yeah. So they're the world's finished condoms. Okay. Yeah, they come, they're, they're really expensive. But yeah, they're um, made at polyurethane. And so when people say to you, I don't like using condoms because they're too thick, you can get something like this. Or you can get it for, some clinics were given to you. Um, they look, they look really funny. Mm. Let me take them out. They look a bit like that. Oh, wow. That doesn't look like a fun night. If you, that can fit something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it looked like that. <laughs> right. And they're really, really, like really a tiny thick. shower cap. Um, sorry, look like a condom demonstrator. <laughs> So they're going like that. Right. And they're really, um, they're really, really, really thin. And they're really strong. Right. Okay. Really, really strong. And so okay. you can get condoms like that. Um, and 
everyone who uses them kind of says to them, oh, those condoms are amazing. You don't, it feels like you've got, they're actually so thin, they feel like you've got nothing on. Right. So for me, when I talk to people about condoms... Put it up again, the name for it, just for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unique. They're, by, they're made by Percenti. Okay, yeah, they, Percenti are the leaders, aren't they? Yeah, yeah well, Percenti... Or no, Durex. Well, people know Durex, and it's like Hoover, and everyone knows who they are. So there's lots of different names. You've got Percenti, you've got Durex, you've got... Um, there's tons of different companies that you come in. All, all condoms are the same. Don't worry about it. Don't think, oh, this condom's better than the other one. But like, this one is more expensive and it's slightly different. <laughs> Some people are saying, what's the name again? Um, <laughs> and where can you get them? Asking for a friend. Because <laughs> yeah. you know what it is as well? I'm thinking like, if you're in a long-term relationship, mm. that, like say I was in a long-term relationship or you're in a marriage, you're just not doing condoms. You're not. Have so. To. If you but, both know, but, then you're right. You're cool, isn't it? Yeah. Is yeah, it good to get regular checks? checks? Yeah, still get checks. But it's like I said to people, get regular checks. Now, as far as I can say, if you're not in a, enough to this to people before, for me, if you're if you're in a long time relationship with somebody and your partner brings an infection home to you, that's male or female, they're taking a the mic, in my opinion. Because mm -hmm. really, truly, inside the relationship, you don't have to use condoms. But if you're a guy outside, use a condom. I'd rather my partner come to me and say to me, Gary, you know what? I kind of like these people. So when I'm having sex with you, I'm going to use condoms. Even though we're in a wrong, if we're in a wrong trade relationship, that's that's the conversation we're having. Don't, so there's no reason for you to bring nothing home, home to us because really you should be having, unless it's something like uh, maybe herpes where you've caught it from skin to skin, but chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, there's no syphilis. There's no reason for you to be bringing that to me because you should be using condoms if you're sleeping outside. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, mm. scary stuff. Because it is—it's just basically based on trust, isn't it? Yeah, it life, is. life's about life is about trust. I'm gonna move you around the building, but I keep talking to you. Go on. All right. Now, whilst it's moving, read this comment out for us, please, babes. From Natalie. Yes. Yeah. She put, okay, he got the wrong girl, but at least he was respectful and responsible enough to tell her, even though he has to endure the fallout of telling the girl he possibly infected her. There are a lot of men who wouldn't do it. Women have to remember that we can become infertile because of chlamydia. For a man, he'll have the infection, but it does mess up his fertility, although mumps does. I've said this before about my friend's daughter contracting chlamydia from her boyfriend at the time. She didn't know she had. She found out she had it because she miscarried a couple of times, couldn't figure out why it kept happening until the doctor tested her. Not only did he give her an STI, but also she found out he was cheating on her and had been for a good while. Jesus be a fence. <laughs> Not a fence. <laughs> uh -huh. but, so, Gary, is that true? So, I know you said it can cause ectopic pregnancies yeah but yeah. is it frequent that um that chlamydia causes miscarriages it, it, it can't well it can do uh, unlikely um if you're being you can be unfertile becoming fertile but you're unlikely um you, it's, it could happen but it's quite unlikely it has to be there for a long time right for it okay. to, be, to be that to be the issue like that and if you're pregnant it's what well, she's quite surprised if you are pregnant as soon as your woman gets pregnant she gets an sti screen when she get, when you're pregnant yeah, right. yeah. You to it. so really and truly it should always be treated before you even get into that situation right absolutely right okay um so this is one of the questions um our producer sent over for you has there been a decrease in the amount of people having sexual health checkups and then i i did since the pandemic so what 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 have you seen since the pandemic in terms of checks and rises in cases and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. um, to be honest with you, things like syphilis have gone up. I've, I've never seen so much syphilis over the last, say, six, seven, eight months. Syphilis has gone crazy. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's gone up. That's gone up. Um, it's, it's about the same, really. People have sex in it. You're never going to stop people from having sex. Uh, so people during the pandemic numbers have been out people have still been sleeping around younger people older people everyone's been having sex right not not, everyone. Not gonna... sorry <laughs> 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 uh, uh. 
No bravado, no bravado. The date, the dating channel. I'm single. I'm looking for man. <laughs> People have been having sex. It just wonder, like as I suppose as well. Um, during the boredom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you be in your house. <laughs> yeah. So what are you gonna do when you're in your house? Have sex if you can. You can. <laughs> if you can. If you can, you're gonna have sex. So I guess that's that's what people have been doing. So syphilis, um, mm. what does that do? What types of symptoms do you get so, with that? You get you get like a rash or body. You get a rash. Oh, what? Oh, we're losing you. Oh, oh no! Symptoms that could kill you. And breaking up. Oh yeah, you broke that up means, for a long time. So we go back. We didn't hear any of Hello? that. Yeah, I know. I, 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 let me let me just go outside of the building, and then I'll get a better reception. All right. Perfect. Wow. So I'm actually quite uneducated in this area, for real. I know the basics, but that's what I. What realized. do you know? I know that if you that you can catch a disease. Uh, not disease, not disease, infection, infection. if you're not careful. Um, I knew that there were different types. I didn't know about the lice. Um, I knew that chlamydia, is it chlamydia? Well, one of them doesn't go away. I wasn't sure which one it was. It never really leaves you. Um, it's just manageable. Yeah, um, that's herpes. That's herpes. herpes. That's it. Yeah. So can you, which one is it? Is it hepatitis that stays in your system forever as well? Hepatitis, hepatitis is a liver infection that affects your liver. Um, and there's different types of hepatitis. You've got A, B, and C. So one's related to food and like things like that. And the other one, um, hepatitis C, kind of more drug users get that. And it's managed through. The, so if you come with hepatitis, it's managed through the hepatology team. And we refer you to hepatology and they back to um, protect your liver. Um, right. syphilis, syphilis always, syphilis, even though you're treated for it, Whenever you do another syphilis test, it will come back positive. But what you've got to do is you've got to tell people that you've already been treated for syphilis and then you get a thing. We check your RPR level, it's the level of syphilis in your body. So most people, is, if you've been treated, then it's me. Um, and then we have to dive into what, then you can't pass it on, it's done. But it always comes, it always shows up in your body. It, 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 show, it always shows up in the test. Okay. So it never leaves you then? No, no, it's gone. It's dead. It's, don't worry about it. It's, 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 it. And that's why when you explain things, we need to be comfortable with people because people think, I've always got it. You don't have it. It's just the, the markers in your body. It's like if people have, if you have, um, get cancer, if I take blood from that, I can always tell that you've had cancer in the past. Does that make sense? Okay, right, yeah, right, so right. It's, it's always gone. It's always, you can always tell it leaves a marker in your blood. Right. Okay. Okay. Interesting stuff. Um, so, next question. We're nearly done, gal. It's all right, babe. It's all right. I've got, I'm, I'm cool. I'm outside now, so I can do anything as long as you like. All right. So, um, when growing up, HIV and AIDS was a big thing, and the use of condoms was a must. Um, have people become more complacent in this day and age about having safe sex, do you think? Not really, not particularly. I just said, as I said before, I think people, I think as health professionals, we know more about these infections now. So we know more about HIV. We know how to manage HIV. We know how to prevent people from passing to people. So right. when people come into clinics and stuff, like if I, if I give someone a positive HIV result, how, I'd say 30% of my time, after my partner notification bit, 30% of my time is about saying to them, look, it's nothing to worry about. We can manage this. You can live a long, healthy life. It's not like the 80s where your people will die and drop it. That's not going to happen to you. You'll be all right. Let's work with it. So that's what we do most of the time now. So I spend a lot of time doing that and then reassuring, reassuring, reassuring and kind of thing. So people aren't complacent, but people, I think people, I think because you don't get those whole them, um, there's one thing I'll say about the government as a whole. Whatever the news big thing is the thing they put in the news and it's like, oh, this is happening. Oh, we need to sort this out. And part of it's done on fear and kind of get people to kind of overreact and be really scared. Not, I, don't think, I don't think the government's trying to scare people, but it's tried, it worries people into kind of doing the right thing. 
So in the 80s, because we didn't know much about HIV and AIDS, it kind of scared people into doing so. People still have the same myths that they did years and years ago because that's what's been in, in drilled into your head from especially people our age because that's what we were told in the 80s and the 90s. Mm. As things getting up, people are not so worried about it. As you get older, you kind of have more information about these things, so you're, you're less worried about it. So right. with sex, I think people... I've, there's that for me there's different people who have sex like you've got the younger people who are just doing it because they're experimenting as you did you've got the people that are doing it around lust and stuff you've got people who are in the kind of committed relationships most people think to themselves especially guys if someone's offering me sex it's kind of hard to say no i don't need to, i don't want to say no i want to say no but boy they're nice or, and the same thing with girls if someone they really like is, has been approaching them for a little while and you've been coming on to them for a little while they kind of eventually think ah oh, no one's going to find out as you say we've we've, we've got we've got an agreement that's worked through things through things and I, as i say to people at work or they come in especially the younger people just use condoms if you want to cheat on somebody and you don't want to get caught use a condom right. and delete things and delete things out of your phone <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. You're not supposed to be educating them on the player tricks. <laughs> not, <laughs> not Zachy behaviour advisor. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just saying to people. It's, it's really amazing when people come to my, into my clinic and they talk to me about things, especially boys and girls, and they start crying about how their partner caught them because they weren't there snapping. I'm like, but didn't you just delete? I don't understand. What's your, what's the, why have you got something in your phone? Delete that. Yeah. 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 Okay, Gary. But you know, but you know how people And uh, no, that's me. Don't try, <laughs> don't try don't try to entrap me like you know, yeah. <laughs> As they say. But no, but if you're if you're doing stuff, if you're it, and I said and I said this to a, a young man who came to my clinic um last week. A lot of this stuff is about about being bravado, having things in your phone, look yeah, yeah show my bridges, yeah, I mean this girl. Yeah. Like, that's and what that's what gets you caught. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you deleted everything, you fold every damn thing, but everyone's gonna uh, look at this. Uh... Yeah. And 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 also, as a, like I say to young people, if you've got images on your phone, you know you can be arrested and charged for and put under sex reg uh, register. No, oh, Gary, you know, yeah. Like, if you're under sixteen, you take a picture and you've got another picture and you send it to someone else. That's a criminal offence. You get down with distributing pornographic material of a yeah. minor. If you're under 16, yeah, absolutely. So, and if, even if you're under 18, it's still a, it's still an offence under the Sexual Sexual Offenders Act. If the wow. person, so you can get done for that. You can be put in prison, prison or put on a Sexual Offenders Register. You can't get a job again. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, What's the youngest sort of case that you've dealt with that's made you sad or stuck in your mind? Um. I'm not going to laugh about this. We've had lots of different cases, but a case that maybe which was bizarre. It was, I can remember the date. It was um, December the thirty first. The clinic shuts at two o'clock. At thirteen fifty nine, a man comes. A, a girl comes in saying she wants a pregnancy test. So the reception girl came up to me and said to me, "Gary, there's a guy and a girl here. She wants a pregnancy test. It's not looking good." I said, "What do you mean?" She goes, "I don't know if it's her boyfriend or not." But yeah, it looks a bit strange. So I, I took I took her in um the room. I did her counselling. She's thirteen. He's twenty nine. Twenty eight. What? Seven. <laughs> so she's pregnant. I'm like, so I've talked. I did it, and I phoned social services and safeguarding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They had to do all the kind of regular things because they, because it's New Year's Eve. No one's really interested in it. Everyone's kind of everyone's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah where got go with it. So I was like. And the social services came and I, all I said to the, um, my team member, because they phoned social services while I was with the person, I said, all I need to know is do you want me to call the police? That's all I need you to know. They were like, oh no, we don't need to do that. And I was like, whatever. So I said, do you want me to let her leave with the guy? Let her leave with her abuser? Basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> they said, oh yeah, I can't remember, I can't remember this at the time what exactly what happened, but. So I was talking to him and I said, do you know this is illegal? He goes, no, sir, no, sir. 
me, um, in my country, we, um, this is all right. I said, yeah, you're not in your country now, boss. Your university, he's at university, so, you know, it's illegal. Okay. So, come back to work on the 4th of January. And um, when I came back, as I walked through the door, everyone's running around that case everyone's everyone's upset uh, we, we we need to get her back in gary call her back get her back in so i phoned her and said it's not new year's in. eve anymore huh yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone, everyone's <laughs> it. it's so urgent I, I, again <laughs> so i phoned her um she, she'd come back in no she said she's gonna come back in and because the police would uh, i had to call police police came to the office and i called her and him and her came back together I looked at him, I was like, is, oh, is you're simple. Are you dumb? Is it simple? <laughs> like, as, run, as he, bitch, run. <laughs> as, he come, as he come through the door, I was like, look at him, like, what, like, are you here? Are you here? Are you okay? The police, the police, went, the police went, I said to her, oh, I said to the officer, oh, he's come with her. And he goes, oh, I said, no, don't do it in front of her. Don't do it like that. So let me, I'll take, I'll bring her into the room and then thing. So I took her to me, my name put, cuffs on him. <laughs> At Let the building, go. yeah, I had to go. To then I had to um, then I had to go to the police station with her to support her through the whole thing, the whole process and stuff. Don't know what happened after I had to go to do them um, safeguarding um stuff and do my kind of my bit and talk to him about it and go to a safeguarding panel and thing. But uh, I met them. So, that was going to be my question. Where were her kids? The mum, the, 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 the whole story. The mum, the person was a lodger in their yard. Oh my lord! But he, he was from their country or whatever. And when they came, he, um, the mum said they were friends, but she didn't realise they were in a relationship. But she, her English was really bad, and um, that kind of trying to understand what she kind of meant, whatever. It is. So eventually, they um, she had had a termination. We got a termination, and then um. I think they left the country and went to live, went to another country. Their mom and dad, just, mom, just, mom just took her away and went to a different country. And she was telling me how she loves him. I said, you're 13, sweet. You can't die. So, yeah, it's, it's really bizarre. We oh, get really God. bizarre, really bizarre cases. People, yeah. But I said, when I talk about these things, they're kind of sensationalized for because we're, we're talking about it. But they're not, the, they're not regular. It's not right. a regular occurrence. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I can I can talk about stuff that's happened. That, that man who told his girlfriend and made her go. This happens, but it's not a regular. Don't like every single person you speak with. It happens. These are Thanks just. God. I've been working in sex for a long time, and these things happen. Come up. Mm. People, things happen. People pe- people lie. People are deceitful, and that's everybody. People, you mean, like there's um, another case where we've got this. A young a woman came to my clinic. She's a sex worker, so yeah. she, she's um yeah. So she she said the, a condom broke when she was having sex with a client, but she's married. The husband doesn't know that she's a sex worker, and he thinks. Which I, I, so I said to her, "Oh, how does he? How do you? How? Where does he think you work?" Because she's telling me she, um she works out of, a, out of a property. Um, this man knows what they do, and they she pays them. There's four girls that work at this property and they pay them £600 a week to use this flat, one bedroom flat and they share it between the girls. So that's a lot of money, isn't it? It's like, what? £2,040 a week? Six each, yeah? <laughs> yeah, each. Yeah, that's that's, that's £2,040 <laughs> for the money. For the money. <laughs> like, how much, are you, how, much, how much are you earning type thing? So we sat yeah. in there, tell me that she had. So I said, well, I said, what does your husband think you're doing? She goes, oh, because he doesn't earn that much. Uh, we do this, and he thinks I work in Amazon, um, and doing a night shift at Amazon in the in the warehouses. And I said, "But Amazon's paying you." She goes, "Oh, he thinks I earn about um, one thousand nine hundred pound a, a month, whatever. But she earns about seven, eight grand a month, whatever, from the work. After she's paid all that, all that excess and stuff." So I was like, "Okay, so what do you do?" She goes, "I say I pull it away, but now obviously the condom's broken. I'm really worried about this, that, and the other." So. Would get, so I gave her PEP and kind of emergency contraception and this and these things. But I, I mean, I was talking to another, I've spoken to her on a number of occasions afterwards and I'm trying to, like, if, you, if you're worried about this life that you're living, you need to change the life you're living. You're going to have to stop yeah. then, yeah. Yeah, you're but changing life. But often, for the family. And she, but she's you imagine her husband would want to kill her if he found out what she was doing, you know? 
you you'll be surprised some some husbands are like um some husbands are what do you cool say? with Enc- it enc- yeah encouraging it you know what I mean whilst they sit at home yeah you know I mean and um, like most most of these people a lot of um sex workers that come to our clinic depend there's different types of sex workers you've got the ones that work on the street the ones that work in not being uh, a lot of the ones we work with are, 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 are um Latin like Brazilian or things okay. like that from that those types of countries and they do it to other to earn money or to subsidize their income. Yeah. Sex so, so, as I said, sexual health on the whole, working in a job is quite funny. Not fu- funny as in <laughs> sometimes the stories you hear sometimes are, are funny or like quite ha ha people that have sex with people. Uh, one guy was trying to have sex with a dog. Like, mm. <laughs> in this <your> country? <laughs> so it's like, why would you try to do that? It was cool and um, it was quite young. <laughs> It was quite young. My my one of my colleagues was telling me that was it was. Um, he said he goes, "Oh, we got Fred. I got with Fred this patient to do some work with." So I was speaking to them, and then um, when I I said I had to make a referral to social services, and then when I spoke to the referring agency, they said, "Oh yeah, there are some issues because her boyfriend was trying to have sex with try tried to have sex with the dog." <laughs> so I was like, I'm "What? Done. I'm done." Okay, that is like, checked what? out. <laughs> I was like, what? But, I think, but I think he would try to, they were trying to experiment, didn't know what to do, and just kind of... So the poor dog's was... watching his mind his own business, <laughs> just wants some little treats to eat, and then he's got a penis and his no, butt. No, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it got that far, but, you know, it's, it, it, I don't think it got that far, but it was that, that was the... um things that always refer to social services and dealt with that way but it was I said there's some things you hear you just have to laugh because these things happen now yeah. oh, I mean, wow. I mean and there's lots of there's lots of weird things that happen or people people talk about sex and we talk about um I don't know um thing in one of the books I was reading talking about rainbow kissing and I was when I when I was chatting to one of my clients about it my clients one of my colleagues about it, I'm like who'd want to do that and they're like, oh, Gary, but this is people's sexual preferences. I'm like, what pleasure could you get from doing it? And so basically it was, um, it's where a, a woman, a man has all sex with, all sex with a woman who's on her period. And then she has, he ejaculates in the mouth and then they kiss. Sorry, Next. sorry. <laughs> but, so they call it rape. And I was like, but who wants to do that? Like, no, he 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 what? No, don't sorry. repeat it. I'm throwing up in my <laughs> mouth. No, I really did miss it. No, no, no. You have to miss it. No, so but I can't. Uh, I mean, a lot. And I said, but like I said before, people took it and think, oh, when I talk about it, like it's like it's, it's not normal. It happens, uh-huh. but it may. But and that's why I said when people talk about sexual preferences and stuff, it, it, when I've heard so much different things, nothing surprises me. Nothing surprises me. Uh, I mean, most most people look at themselves and think, "Oh yeah, I'm outrageous and nothing," because um, what they do. But then I tell you, it's always people doing different things to you. Uh, the chat, everyone's throwing up in the chat. We're, we're all throwing uh, up. Um, I know someone who's watching this is frightened of giving head. Yeah, <laughs> she refuses to give head because she doesn't want no ejaculation in her face. So if she's watching. I know she died at your like, like died, <laughs> died, 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 died. And it's called rainbow kisses. I'm yeah, just people, people, people. That, that's a point. It's not rainbow kisses. It's, I mean, it's not something that happens. I would say if something happens, but when I when I was read when I was going through the notes and stuff, and and I saw it, and I was like, huh? And then I said, and I said, and then people have lots of sex. So something what we call chem sex. So they have sex when they're on drugs, like crystal meth. G yeah. and then, and that, that chem sex is really big in the MSM community. Like they will spend, like I'm talking, thousands of pounds a month on drugs and then have sex and then be up for like four or five nights straight having sex, not just straight, five nights straight. And then what drug know is that? <laughs> <laughs> hey! Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> they get crystal meth, the G, there's all the stuff. They have to end wow. the party drugs, and yeah, and and they come in, come to a clinic, and they're like in tears because they don't know what's happened or they've been sexually assaulted. 
yeah, men and women coming and being sexually assaulted, or especially men on the drug when they're on chemsex, mm. be sexually assaulted, and then obviously with women and sexual assaults and stuff, it's yeah, it's um, a bit weird. So I say, I should say rapes and sexual assaults. Wow. That literally turned my stomach. Sorry, Nat. Like someone could explain when you watch the show back, you'll hear what he said. But I, <laughs> no, I heard the first part. <laughs> literally, he cannot I repeat that. Was, I was like, throwing up, and so I didn't catch the second part too much. But I think I caught it, and I'm just, I just feel like I've led a very sheltered life because I don't get it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but is it? But is it? What? It's not. It's not something. It's not you're supposed to get. You're not, but I suppose it's a different thing. Like it's like the gender. It's about, and this is what I say to people about sex all the time. When, especially when you talk to younger people and they talk about what they should be doing, what they shouldn't do, and I always say to them, it's about what you feel comfortable with. So some people may feel comfortable with doing A. Some people may feel comfortable with B, doing B. Some people, some girls may think are comfortable having vaginal sex. Some girls may think are be comfortable having anal sex. Mm. At the end of the day, it's kind of what you feel comfortable doing. Right. And what you and what and, and the relationship you've got with your partner and and how that makes you feel and how they make you feel and what you because some people if you're with somebody that makes you feel safe and secure you're you're willing to experiment and do things. Yeah, you are willing to experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, certain things. Yeah, so same. So then, yeah, yeah. anal so, sex is not one of them. Are there higher risks for people who have anal sex in terms yeah. of? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're more, you're like you're more likely to, if like with hate for um if you're more likely to because it's got the the thing the skin there's thinner and blood vessels come back so you don't mind bloodborne infections you can pass on that way. So you're more prone to bloodborne infections okay, through yeah, anal yeah, sex. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See it there. I mean, I'll do it. <laughs> so, but, 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 but you're, just, you're saying you won't, you won't do it but you may think to yourself one that like, someone make you feel so way like oh they suggest it it's a bit like oh a bit like when people say um threesomes or something like that like some people be like that's a no then some you'll be with someone else and that person makes you feel such a way that you think oh you know what i would need to try it not no. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. I would like to think that I'm quite liberal minded and like I say I've got a whole array of well I've got a very close small circle of friends but I know loads of people and I've had loads of conversations so I'm not the girl that would sit there and judge you if you say you've had anal sex or you've had a threesome or any of that I, I like to hear people's sexcapades but um, there's just some things I'm not doing yeah yeah, I do feel like threesomes is definitely something I don't care who presented it and in what foil it's not happening. Do you know much, do you much, guys, do you know much guys are disappointed now, like Harry, talk that to you? <laughs> <laughs> what, you no. think guys want to have a threesome with Natalie? Well, yeah, but no, I'm just saying that. Like, <laughs> Natalie's a nice man. I think it's just inviting problems into your bedroom. Yeah. So we we've been quite tamed. Can we ask you about your personal preference with food? Nah, no, 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 no. I don't do personal. I, I work in the NHS. I don't do personal preference. I, <laughs> I always talk about so do you feel, So you you don't. So obviously, working in the NHS and in this particular environment, you are just open minded to it all, or is there anything that makes you wince? Do you know? Do you know? There's, there's, there's things I probably there's things that I wouldn't do, right? And right. I, I think more, I think there's things I wouldn't do because I think, I suppose, I suppose if I, if, if I'm with a partner, or I'm with a, a partner and we, we're together, I, I'm hopefully I would know that partner and know what she would and wouldn't accept or wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't like. So for example, if my, if, if I was into anal sex, for example, and then I said, uh, I knew my partner wasn't in it, I respect I wouldn't be asking because she's my partner. Yeah. If I know, if I, if I, if I know my partner's totally against threesomes, I wouldn't ask her to do it because I know she's totally against it. Against it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, and so I think something, oh, it's all right, even better still. You spoke about it earlier, um, your friend who doesn't want to do oral sex. Now, if I knew my partner didn't want to have oral sex, then it, I wouldn't expect her to do it. I don't want to, if she's my partner and I care for her and I love her, I would want to do what she, what makes us both happy. Yeah. Not what makes me happy. Lost your camera now. Yeah, yeah. There you are. Yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, let me see. So, we have a conversation. 
we have a conversation and that conversation we're talking and that's why I've talked, having any relationship I've had we've been quite open about sex and relationship because they first of all they know it's my job so they will ask they will start ask, people will start even just general girlfriends that I know from back in the day they will ask me really bizarre questions right and and they will talk to me about issues and in their bedrooms or out of their bedrooms or whatever and they've done that or whatever and how would I and what do I think of that and I'm like well you know what I'm going to say everyone has their own sexual preferences if right. you don't like that tell your partner you don't like it yeah yeah anyway, and I think I think I think doing something that you don't like and you keep on doing it just brings resentment up in a relationship yeah so you kind of got to be open and be and be able to talk to your partner about it and you know what I mean so some people, for example, some people will be like, I don't mind giving, I'm, I'm insecure, for example, I'll give, I'll give you like insecure. The pit where, um, with the guy, she, that, Daniel, when she was sleeping Daniel, with Daniel, yeah. and he ejaculated in her face. Yeah. Right, and she got really upset about it. Yeah. Right, just the day, <laughs> she said, this pit, but some people would be all right with that. I've seen, I see people that are quite happy with that. No, nah, man, <laughs> yeah. So I was on this side. I got that disrespect. And you, you, like, there's got to be a conversation. There's got to be the a whole conversation. come in my face. That that's one of the things that I know. Come in face, anal sex. Come in the mouth. No. Free rules. I yeah. I think at least and there's probably more, but those are the three yeah. things. Or well, at least have a conversation. Don't oh, just oh, do Trisha, that. So Trisha, you left that threesome, so you're right with that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No, <laughs> never say never. Never say never. You never know. But um, I've never had one. Okay. Never had one. But I never say never. But I can't see. I don't like to share food. Yeah. Let alone. It's the sharing thing. Yeah. And, it, and it's but, it, so, so, hold on, hold on. But you look. You see, and that's one thing I talk to girls about. You always look at it a bit like there's gonna be two girls. Who said there's gonna be two guys? Oh no, no I wouldn't want that. I'd either. find that too intimidating. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm saying that. I'm not saying you're saying, but I'm saying like, people look at it like, oh, it's they always come from that point of view, but it could be other way anyway. Yeah, no, I know people who have had um free sins with two guys, and, and mm-hmm. I would personally find that too intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, but some people have said it's the best experience they've ever had in their life, and that I'm missing out and I need to, to fix up. So <laughs> You, you know, you never... <laughs> start, seeing, start seeing the, the pings in the chat popping up. Yeah, Trish, I come in, I come in. <laughs> <laughs> you, you fix it up this week, yeah. Um, yeah. Someone wants to know: Can your bum hole collapse if you have too much anal sex? <laughs> Sorry, it's a good question, it but it just it, made me it, it doesn't collapse, but it, there can be issues. It, it, it can get loose, Ooh, and then obviously it, it get loose. It, it can it can get loose, and it, it can cause um there can be anal problems. Yeah. What such as piles and piles and, and and obviously obviously the fleece come out and they just keep coming out automatically and you can't stop and stuff like that you can't because obviously it's a muscle in it so if the muscle gets loose and stuff then it can't contract and it can't open into it. Uh, it's, it not can worth it. it's not it worth can it. Cause a, I mean it's not going to happen the first time but it depends on how big your partner is and stuff like that it can cause trauma and stuff like that so yeah right but some people have said it's the best sex you can ever have yeah and it's the best sex you can ever have so a lot of people say that. Yeah, a lot of people say that. A lot of people say yeah. it's thing. I mean, if if you in certain communities, um, when I used to work in Camden, yeah, one of, one of the uh, actually young people are amazing. So there was there's a group of young people in a state in called Ferdinand State, and there's another state. Um, oh, I've forgotten the name of the other state. We're used to back in Houston. So when I used to do work with the boys over at Ferdinand State, they used to say the summer's time. So. The boys of the boys of Summertown will say the girls at sorry the boys at Ferdinand will say the girls at Summertown are all, all easy and easy to get, right? And the boy, and our and our girls are amazing; they don't do nothing. And the girls at Summer boys at Summertown will say the girls at uh, Ferdinand were all easy to get, and they were sleeping with them all. But they were but the girls on their state are lovely, right? Right. Because they were playing it like oh our girls are great and the, the other girls are great. Thing. But what they will do, all the girls are doing, because they're coming from certain backgrounds and about they're worried about virginity and stuff, they would all have anal sex. Oh. All of them would have. We have anal sex. They don't see that as sex. As sex. They don't see it as sex. Yeah. Wow. It carries but, the same risks. Yeah. Just say the same same thing. Obviously, the only if he does cut, you won't get. You probably won't get pregnant. Yeah. Probably. That's or just probably. definitely not. Probably. Probably. Oh, probably. Should, obviously, because the vaginal hole in the um, 
you know, it's quite close. Because you know, sperm comes out and drips round, then sp- the sperm swims, isn't it? So it can go up to right. up to your vagina. So okay. it's, it's unlikely, but oh. it's still can. You still get it. Okay. You, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't even have to have sex to have. You don't even have to have sex to get pregnant. Sorry. If a, if a, if a guy, if if a girl masturbated a partner, or and she had sperm and has she touched her vagina, then obviously sperm can swim. It's unlikely, but it can happen. For real. Well, we're learning shit today, let alone yeah. the young people that are out there. So it it. Yeah, it it's unlikely, but it can happen. I mean, people have to have sex. I mean, people say that oh, you've got to have. It's got to be right pen. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be penetrative. Don't have to be. If you if you've got sperm, at the, so, uh, like I say to people, when a man gets an erection on the top of his penis, there's shiny stuff. Yeah, that's pre cum. That could impregnate every single woman in North London. A teaspoon of sperm could impregnate every single woman in Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you, got millions it's, in it, isn't millions it? Millions yeah. in it. So if all it takes is one. <laughs> I was just about to ask about pre cum as well because that yeah. was a myth when I was younger. You can get pregnant off it. You can't get yeah. pregnant off it. You, you can, can. You can't. You definitely, can. Definitely yeah. can. Definitely can. Yeah. Okay. Definitely can. No argument. And that's why I say, people, when you're putting condoms on, if you put them on the wrong way around and then turn them the right way around and put them on, because you've got the pre cum, people can get pregnant. And then the man will swear blind it's not theirs because they didn't even really sleep with you. And <laughs> yeah, I use a condom. I use a condom. Ain't me. Yeah. I swear blind it ain't you. Okay. All right. So let's go back to one of our questions. And what's question three? All right. So question three. A few years back, there was some research that suggested the group with the most STIs were 40 plus. Um, is this still the case? And if so, why do we think that is? Mail, on, Mail Online said sexual health warning for middle-aged infections are on the rise among those in their 40s and 50s because they're too embarrassed to visit a clinic. Is that still the case? Yeah, so basically, anything you read in the Daily Mail, don't watch it, yeah? <laughs> don't, don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I think it's the same. It's the same. It's always been the same thing. It's about infections. It's about for, with all infections. It's about if you're going to clinic to get checked. The people who are going to clinic the most are the, uh, are the people that are the safest. Now I'm using condoms. So if you're not going to clinic that much and you're having lots of sex, then from what they, I mean, I think Jay Z said it. Forty is the new thirty. <laughs> you hear me? So people are having sex at a later rate, uh, later into age. So back in the day, when the people were in their sixties, less people having. But now you've got what they call cougars and whatever having sex with younger boys. So sex in, infections, the infection pool is um, is mixing in a wider pool now than it was before. So I remember I remember doing um, doing some course or some uh, um, some bit of training, and they were talking about why do certain communities have higher rates of infections in their in other communities and like I said because people are more likely to sleep with people who look like them mm-hmm. yeah right. so like so if you're if you've got a group of I don't know black people you're more likely to have sex with other black people right I'm not saying you're only gonna have sex with other black people, but you're more likely to have sex with other black people so if the pool of infection is in that black in the party in the community in N16 then that's where the, the effect is going to happen. That's where the infections are going to be. And a, a prime example of that is when we did something in, um, there was a school in Camden, we did some work in, and we tested, um, there was a big spate of chlamydia, tons. This is what I'm talking about, maybe about 10 and 12 years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. And that we found a big spate of chlamydia in this school, um, and in these school, two man. schools, in these two schools. And when when we did contact tracing, we traced it back to two boys. <laughs> went all the way. So about 20 people had the infection, and it, it basically started off with these two. When we did the contact tracing, it went back to these two boys, basically. So it, it, and it was that because these two boys and their friends were having sex within their community, in their little group. So, then, so it all depends on what group. So if you've got, when they say lots of 40-year-olds, it depends on what community, where they are. So it probably mm-hmm. could be true for that area they were that day. But it doesn't necessarily mean that all 40 year olds are. But if you're having sex regularly and changing your and to be honest with you, what I've noticed that lots of older people are falling out of relationships now. Mm-hmm. So right. you, and it, and it's kind of like 
it's a bit like, oh, you've been in a relationship for 20 years or how long have you been with your partner? And then the relationship breaks down. And it's usually one person is on this thing, oh, I'm never going to sleep with anyone. And then one person just going mad sleeping with everyone just to kind of get that person out of their system. Yeah. And then, that, and then when you start taking more and more risks, then more and more things happen. Okay. Um, I think the last question we've got kind of repeats itself. Go so on. if we, we, let's go back. Let's see what it is. Hang on. I don't think I've shared the screen though. <laughs> it would help if I shared the screen. Um, oh, I've lost it now. It kind of repeated itself anyway. Um, so let's just jump onto the Mythbusters. Go on. I want to ask, um, there's kind of a perception out there that um, people who are gay or in the homosexual community are less safe than the general community. Is that true or false? What, what they say, what, there's certain men that sleep with men that have more riskier sex. So because, and so infections and, right. A uh, better way to explain it. It's a bit like I spoke to, I spoke about communities earlier. Because the men that sleep with men communities not as big as the heterosexual community. If you've got an infection, it spreads quicker. Does that make sense? Because it's there's less people for it to spread to. So that's why it may come up as being a bit less safe. So more infections kind of go around. So if you look to say there was a hundred, say where there was a hundred straight people and there was fifty gay uh, men that sleep with men. If you're having sex in that 50, you, the infection is going to round go quicker than it's going to go around for the 100. And it goes around sense. in the 100, but it's not it's necessarily it's, it's, that they're more promiscuous than we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. That's, yeah. Okay. That would be, that, that'd be the best way for me to explain it, to say that. But yes, there are, it's, it's, it, there's just as many promiscuous MSM men as there are heterosexual men. Absolutely. But obviously, it's big, yeah, it's just that. Mm -hmm. So, they, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I know the media and um, people like to portray men that sleep with men has been sleeping with anything that moves That's and it's not, not it. true it's not, it's true, not yes. true at all I, I mean i've got people working men uh, gay men who work in my office with me and i don't think one of them has had a partner for like 20 15 15 20 years right yeah so it's different and stuff yeah i've got some um gay people that are close to me that are in <laughs> Good relationships, yeah, long-standing yeah. relationships. It doesn't yeah, necessarily yeah. mean that they're um, promiscuous, but that's uh, that's the narrative that kind of comes up all the time. But, uh, what, what they just go to say, the gym and they go to the gay bar yeah. and they just have sex, and it's not necessarily true. Do you know what? I will say that does is kind of semi-true because there's like I don't know in short it's certainly like there was a sauna in sauna it's called um, I've got the name of it now. Um, there's a sauna we we used to go and do work with. And people, just, there's dark, dark rooms, people just go in there and have sex. But if that's what you like, that's what you like. That's what you want to do. So there, right. if, there, if there was opportunities or if... Oh, we lost, yeah. Each sex people we knew, knew that, that would be inside there. You cut <laughs> like out, you stuck for a minute. Say that again. Oh, I'm sure if there were people, heterosexual bar clubs like that, that you could go and have sex with, there will be tons of people that we know inside there having. Yeah, sex. <laughs> oh, so, so. Yeah. it's 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 about it's about it's, it's about sex. A lot of sex, especially when you're younger, it's about opportunity. Have you got the opportunity to have sex? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when mummy, when mummy and daddy are not home, we're having a party. We're taking the, we're taking advantage. Yeah, so it's about opportunity, yeah. and that's why, and that's why, young people have a lot of issues because they may get. It's about opportunity, so things aren't planned. So when young people come to my clinic and they said, oh, Gary, I'm going to have sex with my partner for the first time today. I come to get condoms. I'm there clapping them. Like, you're planning, you're thinking this thing out. Yeah. Not just coming, oh, we've had sex and it's, it's an accident. Mm. Okay. Um, right. well, a couple of years ago, I was working in a, um, in a young people's home. And one of the young people was really promiscuous. And um, she had suspected HIV. And someone really believed that I worked with that if we sat on the same toilet as her, and I'm talking, yeah. this would have been about, I don't know, four or five years ago, I still heard someone say, well, I don't want to sit on the same toilet or share 
facilities with her because you can catch it. So based on all of the things that you said about HIV, can we just reiterate now? Right. The only way you can catch HIV is sex, by using um, needles, sharing like for drug addicts, uh, needles. Um, if you if you're a mother, you can pass it to your baby. If, if you don't, if you're not on medication, what's happened recently um, in um, in one of the boroughs, a, a mother gave birth to a baby and she had HIV. And she wasn't on medication to pass it to her baby. And breast milk, or through breastfeeding, and um, if you cut your arm and someone else is cutting, you mix blood together. That's the only way you can get. It. You cannot get it any other way. Okay. And, mo- and some of those, and some, and some of those ways are are are, uh, are very unlikely. Like more than likely because you're not going to do it. You see, if you've got someone with a big cut in hand, you've got a big cut in your hand. You're not going to be holding hands together and stuff like that. You don't know, so it's not yeah. like yeah. So so yeah, it's it's very likely. You can't catch uh, can't catch STIs from sitting on toilet seats. You can't get them unless you've had some kind of sexual contact with somebody. The only one you could, the only STI you probably could get. By not having sex, by that thing would be would be um, Natalie's favorite pubic lice or crabs. <laughs> <laughs> that is favorite one. Uh... Kid, pubic lice, like the joke is that they stay there even when there's no pubic hair. Like you're out of water. Yeah, that's the part. Yeah, but, but they live under your skin and they just lay eggs under your skin. Oh, cash. <laughs> you can't just you can't just shave them off and stuff. And probably don't forget you've got hair. You got hair all over your kind of genitalia. So even around so if you've got the ones even around where your rectum is where your bum is, then there may be hair around there, so they'll be around there. And it's it, you find it, it's usually people start itching and scratching and then you'll see I said you'll see like little nits like people in hair, you'll just see them. Okay. Yeah, they're not they're not super small, but yeah, they're not they're easy to get rid of. Yeah, just, but you just go to the chemist, get some shampoo, or the doctor will prescribe you some shampoo, or we give you some shoe, grab it on, they die. Takes a couple, it takes a couple of days, and they die. They just drop off and they die, and the eggs, and the eggs die as well. Right, but they're still under your skin. No, no. Once you've got the eggs, the eggs will kill, kills everything. The shampoo will kills everything. It's a bit poison, so it basically kills, kills it off. Which makes you, oh dear. Yeah, it's right. okay. So. This is going to be like a, a how long is a piece of string question, but I'm going right. to ask it anyway. Is there more sexual transmitted infections in a particular gender? Nah, that's it. That's what it is, isn't it? So, um, it's, I would say, I would, I would no, actually, well, you know what? Actually, you know what? I would say there's probably, uh, this is not official, but just thinking about it, there's probably more in men than women. And the reason I say that, is because women are more likely to go to hospitals to get checkups or do various things than a guy is. And it's not because there's more thing. It's just if you think about how often any of your partners have gone to doctors and how many so if you've been in a relationship, say for five years, and you think how many times you went to a doctor and how many times they went to a doctor, yeah. Then you'll see you it just makes common sense that it's probably gonna be more probably be more man. I mean yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably, but it's just because women go to hospitals more and will have more checkups. If that makes right. sense. So, if, for example, if you go to have a coil fitted, then we'll do an STI screen you before you have the coil fit to make sure you right. got chlamydia. So then we don't want to get PID or nothing like that. Okay. In the contraception, I mean, and it's yeah. So if you're if you're getting the, one of the one of the types of pill, for example, you're more likely to have your blood pressure taken and all that stuff as part of that consultation. You know I mean, so even when girls say to me, "Oh, Gary, which pill should I take?" and I give them, I say, "Well, you know, I'm not." A, um, I can't recommend. I'm not medically, but some of them won't give it to you. But you may want to take, uh, take Clara or Yasmin, for example. Right. And then they'll be like, oh, okay. And then the doctors will take them through. Most doctors, well, most sexual clinics won't give you those ones because they're too expensive. But your doctor will give them to you. Okay. Any questions or myths that you want to bust, Natalie, before we I've wrap heard, up? I've heard enough. <laughs> All right, sorry, Nat. I didn't upset you. <laughs> Trauma. <laughs> Leave us with one more story. Oh, well, your your stories are, your antidotes are good. <laughs> Give us another story, story, one. Story, story, story. Story, story, story. Um, one that blew your mind. More than um, what we've heard already. So, <laughs> no. So, there, there was the man that done the trickery on the woman. Has there, yeah. any been, has there been any women who have done trickery in that same sort of treacherous way? 
not, not, not that I, I mean, could have, but not when I've been around the state. I mean, how I, long I, have you I, been I, in the service? Yeah, long time, a long time. Good, well, over 15 over years. Over a decade? Yeah, well, over, over a decade. I've been working And you've not met a woman to do it yet? Oh, well, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't, I haven't seen mm. the, uh, I've seen, look, I've seen girls come in who've had X amount of partners, but, and they've told me they've told their partner, but I know they haven't told their partner. So, it's kind of right. it's about honestly it's just this guy it's just basically this guy was I think some people feel comfortable with certain services so they come to our, my service because they are that for example they know that I work there so there's a couple couple black guys that come in or, or young girls come in that come in and say oh is Gary around blah 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 and talk to me and they want to come and see me I think I try to I don't really see patients that often now um and most of the team sees the patients I, I kind of take a step back from that but yeah, so you'll get people asking for certain members of staff because they feel comfortable with them. Um, I to, uh, one one of my colleagues just told me she was so annoyed that um, and when she told me this, I sat down. I was like, I, my mouth was like, really? So, patient tested for um, chlamydia gonorrhea with a with a partner and come for treatment. So it's an inject. We've gonorrhea. It's an injection in your bum. Okay. So. She left the room to talk to the nurse, the nurse or doctor about giving an injection. When she came back, they were having sex. What? <laughs> On her chair. You couldn't wait till you got out of the sexual health clinic to have sex. That's why they there. <laughs> My colleague was so disgusted. So, and then she, what, she, uh, <laughs> she said that she was going to be. She said she was going to be like 15 minutes. And when she come back, she said the, the girl was over the guy and her skirt was up. And she opened the door and it was like, what? And then shut the door. <laughs> and then she knocked on the door. It's like, oh, hello, hello, hello. Knocked on the door. And the man, said, the man said, come in. And he said, oh, I just can't keep my hands off her. And, and you might <laughs> need to in the clinic. <laughs> 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 She was so disgusted, like just horrified. And she's like, Gary, I can't work in that room again. I'm not working in that room again. I'm not working I in that room again. I am not working in that room again. And so, yeah, so she, that made, that made, that, 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 that made me laugh. Whatever it is. But I said, I mean, some of the things that we heard, I mean, stories that go on, there's so many that I can't even think about. Think right like, now. What, that one, that, oh, this one, that one. There's so I've got many a question things. For, for you. Yeah. You know, like I just asked you about homosexuality um, and sex and so on and so forth, but we very rarely talk about lesbians in that circle yeah. of, of um, in that community. And it's obviously because lesbians can't have penetrative sex, and so we don't. I talk for myself. Well, they, they, I don't, they don't really they, see they, them as being at risk, but are they? Right. So, yeah, way less chance to get any type of infection, but the thing, where they get they get infection from is from sharing sex toys. Right. So if yeah, you've got um dildos or whatever, and they share them and don't wash them or clean them or they haven't cleaned them, then they they've got a chance of passing infection there. But majority and stuff, I don't really see much. Um, I Can you get chlamydia and stuff in your mouth? Yeah, get chlamydia in your mouth. Get one in your throat. Right. Your throat. So we do, we do. So if you're a gay man, we will always swab your. We do, a, like most people when you come to clinics, like if a girl comes to clinic, we will give them um, a regular test. So it'd be a blood test for HIV, syphilis, and uh, maybe hepatitis, and a vaginal swab for chlamydia and gonorrhea. So if you're um, a man that sees a man, the standard test is a rectal swab for chlamydia and gonorrhea, right. a urine test for chlamydia and gonorrhea, a blood test for chlamydia and, uh, for HIV, syphilis, hepatitis. Um, B and C and a throat swab for um, cl for chlamydia and gonorrhea. So free site free site testing. If you're a woman and you feel that you've got an infection, so if you if you've got an if you've got chlamydia and gonorrhea and you've got it in your throat mm. um, or your penis or your rectum, depending on when you've got it, it the treatment will give you will clear up wherever it is in your body. So we give you one right. set, called one course of antibiotics. So we don't mean so if we test a woman and she's got it in her throat as well as a vagina, we just test it. But lots of times we get uh, men that sleep with men, they may only have it in their throat, but not in the rectum or the penis because they may only give them personal oral sex or whatever. Right. I see. Yeah, yeah. So you mean 
yeah. So people get it in the throat. Um, you can't tell if you've got it in the throat. It's not like, oh, I've got a sore throat, I've got chlamydia. Can't, most people can't tell. Okay. You know, you're going to do with the time, those times. Most people can't tell yourself. We just do a swab and take the thing out. Um, so if a, if a person comes to my clinic and said, I've only had oral sex, then I'll give them, I'll do a throat swab on them. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So that I mean that's the best. We we would be the best test that we do. We do lots of so we do lots of different type types and stuff. But yeah, or, or you can do. So if you've got symptoms, then the doctor will take a swab from your vagina or your penis and then put it under the microscope and then we look at it and we'll see to see the infection if it's gonorrhea, if it's something like it may not be sexually. It may be like if a girl gets a um, thrush or. BV or one of those infections, not sexual, but we'll see that we look them under the microscope and then give you treatment on that on that um infection. Right. Yeah. All right. Now you said about BV. Break down what BV is just for the people who don't okay. know, because you said it's not sexual, but not it's sexual. something that you will pick up yeah. in a sexual screening, right? Yeah, yeah. So we we do test for it sometimes. If if, if you've got we look for it under the microscope, bacterial vaginosis. So or yeah. It's um, it's basically like hormone imbalance. It, it's like thrush, so you get it, and it may cause it to, or, or it'll be, or there'll be a foul, a foul odor that we will put right. down, and you'll smell it and stuff. So lots of women get it. Lots of Afro Caribbean women get it because mm. they use soaps and stuff on their vagina when you're not meant to. So yeah, you should right. be using you should you should be using some of the soaps and stuff like that because it can cause problems and stuff, or perfumes and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I know I know somebody used to spray perfume on their vagina, around their vagina, and like, and then she will come to the clinic and say she's got burning off. And I'm like, but when I sat and told her, like, Oh, you got issues? Are you crazy? Are you dumb? Why do you do that? And she goes, Yeah, but I want it to smell. I'm like, smell what? Just wash. That's <laughs> what what about talcum powder? All, all that stuff, you should be reading anything, you should put anything down there. Like it could it causes an imbalance and it can give you thrush. Oh, I'll right. other things. Sure. I mean, obviously. Yeah, don't don't use it. I mean, obviously, if you use it on your thighs because you're wearing some kind of um, I don't know what you call them thing, cycling shorts and stuff. You don't want to shave, then cool. But yeah, try and keep it away from your, your genitalia. Yeah, there. We just put water wash and you're good to go. You don't have to cream it. You don't have to cream your penis like some guy told me. He creams his penis every day. I'm like, bro, what are you doing that for? <laughs> was... So when you have when you have sex with your partner, you may cause it. You may give her a, like thrush or something like that. No. But... Can it cause him any issues? Not really, because it's on the outside, it's on the outside of the skin. But obviously, if you have sex with somebody, you put something on the outside of your penis and you have sex with your partner, then that's going to cause problems. Yeah. Right. Problem, 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 yeah. Is there more chance of infection for people who are uncircumcised? Yeah, so you've got more, you've got evidence shows that you've got more risk of catching things. Um, if you're uncircumcised, you've got more like, risk of catching things like HIV. But it's not, it, but for, when, I, when I say that, the thing I, I say to people, I would never say to somebody, oh, you're circumcised, so you haven't got, you're, on, you're, you're circumcised, so you've got no risk, and then you're, you're circumcised. If you've, had, if you've had risk sex, you've had the risk sex. But evidence yeah. shows you're less likely to get it. Yeah. Catch it by that way. But if you've had risk sex, there's still a chance. So that's because you're uncircumcised. Yes, you may have less of a chance, but there's still a chance. Okay. Just to, I mean, it's still, it's still. If you're, if you're having any type of high risk sex, you're having a, a high risk sex. Right. Yeah, and that, and that's what I'd say to people. More about high risk sex. Use condoms, then you're less likely to catch it. Yeah. Use Last condoms. question. Um, that I have anyway. So I was talking to a young person about getting checked, and one of the things, like you mentioned earlier, they seem to think that when they come in to get a check that there's going to be like a contraption that goes up their penis and there's like an umbrella that opens out and that it's painful and it's just, it's worse than the dentist and just not happening. What, what, let's miss, let's, let's bust that myth. What right, happened? So basically, so when you come to, when you come to a clinic, the only thing you would have to do as a guy, if you've got, if you've got no symptoms, you just come, you urinate into a bottle and then we send it off. So you've got to do, you've got a week. If you wee, if you wee in a normal house, it's the same thing you have. Now, if you have symptoms, you've got a discharge, then we, we just think to scrape a, a sample out of your penis or your penis. Now, to be honest with you, if you've got symptoms, usually it's so you're so uncomfortable or it's so painful, you don't care what we've it's no, it's no umbrellas. So we just take a little sample from the top. It doesn't even hurt. 
What yeah. do you use, like a cotton swab or? It's um, it's uh, I, I, do you know what? I wish I had one in the car with me. It's like a, it's really, it's really tiny little little plastic thing, and it's got like a little, like a little circle on the end. I've got, you know. Yeah, it's like a little circle and it just takes a little kind of swab from the tip of your penis. It doesn't even go in. And the same thing. So I think, like, with girls, I mean, I don't know if you... If I come and do this again, what if I come to do this again, what I'll do is I'll bring all the stuff, like all the different bits and pieces, like the things for cervical smears, all that, and I can show you what they actually look like, how they open up and stuff and how we do things. I've got lots of, like, models and stuff. So you can get a little thing and go in and it's about... I can't even how thin it is. Tiny. It's really thin. It's really, right. really thin. It's a bit like when I. It's a bit like when I say to um some people, "Oh, you got to do a swab." I show a girl a swab. She's like, "Oh!" I'm like, <laughs> to someone, and then, I'm sure you boy, your boyfriend's penis is bigger than that. <laughs> tiny, and you're tiny screaming at that. Not, yeah. not that. necessarily. You trust me. It, <laughs> it, 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 it's not. It, it's not even. It's not even that. Not even that big. The thing's tiny. Please, stop it. <laughs> yeah, behave yourself. Yeah. Behave, yeah. Come on. Yeah, behave yeah. yourself. And uh, and yeah, so um we've got lots um yeah, so that's the thing we use and um and then if if it's stuff it like herpes, we've got like cotton bulbs that we swab on the outside where the sort when the actual sore is and we send that off and then it comes back with either HSV two or HSV one. So herpes. if you have like um herpes that come out in the form of cold sores, can mm. you still get genital warts or is it one or the other? No, so yeah, you can so type you can have type one on your genitals and you can have type two on your mouth. Right, but you can't have both. You can. You could. Can you? Could you? But unlikely, but you could. Very, very unlikely. Most people have one or the other. The devil doesn't rest, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well I've kind of okay. I've kind of face. <laughs> It's just like, just my face. It's like, Natalie's traumatized. She's, I'm when, really whenever good. she's quiet on a show, that means she's listening and taking it in. I'm like she listening. is traumatized. So, any questions, Nat? Um, no, I think it's good that there's a lot of myths um, that were busted today, okay. and it's just it's good to get a lot more insight because we're all grown we all talk about sex a lot we all uh, you know interested in sex but you know this is the part that often gets overlooked um, and I think, and even I feel, by I think, the grown folk yeah and i think that's really important to say that i think that with girls and guys you should talk about it more often between each other even and funnily and and you, i know you, you're gonna i did a session with some group of men about a week ago and this guy was saying how he doesn't give he he, he gives, his girlfriend shouldn't take contraception. He refuses to let her have co- contraception because it's bad for the woman's body. I said, I'm not talking foolishness, but having he that conversation to let her, it's not her yes. choice. I, I, we, we had this conversation, Ali. Defend, I was defending you, Natalie. Not you personally. I, I was stick up for the women. I was like, no, it's her choice. <laughs> I was saying it's her choice, and he was like, no, she's my woman. She can't you gotta do as I tell her. I was like, bro, just stop chatting foolishness. But he wasn't refused to think he thought it was some bad it's woman's hormones in a woman's body and it's unnatural hormones i said don't talk rubbish i said you want to have a child every other every, every 10 months or do you want to um get your yeah i don't mind if i got but you're not looking after the child children yeah, I've, that's got, why I don't I've, got, mind. I've got five children and i look after all of them i said oh, okay so how many partners you've got you guys have four four different mothers I'm, like, I'm sure they all don't feel that you if i spoke to each one of them i'm sure you at least three of them would be like, nah, he's not doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> At least three of them would say, if not all four. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's your choice. But yeah, nice talking to you girls. Yeah, lovely. Oh, well, yeah, it's very informative. Cool, very nice. informative. And yeah, we will do a part two. We'll think yeah. of some, some more scenarios and try and get some of the group members if they're not shy. To jump on and chat with you, that would be good. Yeah. If, I, if you want to, people to ask questions or they want to come in and come in the group and say, ask a question or ask, um, or just talk about things or experiences and stuff they can do through. I mean, even if I've got um, one of my doctors, she's amazing. Like, when I mean amazing, different level. She's actually, she's actually on um, BBC TV every on a Friday, every Friday on um, that. They know they've got a new 
their version of Lorraine on a on a Monday on a Friday. Her name's Dr. Vanessa Vanessa Appiah. Amazing. And she does like lots of stuff with lot of stuff with black women's groups. Right. And, and current, looking at black women's health in specific, that's her speciality. And she's really kind of keen on promoting and getting black women to look at their health and all the health inequalities that surround around medication, childbirth, and all the disparities around that stuff. Um, she's the, she's the lead in HIV for my service and stuff. She's a different legal, amazing woman. She's yeah, she's actually BBC have contracted her now to do this Friday um, um, Friday morning thing, like you know, like a Dr. Hillary type thing, but talk right. about various different. And if you like for Black women's issues, yeah, so just just and yeah, just and like kind of obviously most of the people that probably I'm not saying all the listeners are Black women. But it'd be so good for you lot to kind of chop things up about black women. Why do black women die so much in child in pregnancy, childbirth, all, and, uh, yeah. childbirth, and all that type of stuff? And look at Definitely. kind of issues about what you can do as black women to kind of support yourselves and your partners. Because as as we know, black women in the family are like the leaders in the family and kind of make their partners do what they need to do to look after themselves and their family and kind of had support that. I think you'd be really quite interested. She's she's gone to Ghana today. But yeah, I'm sure when she comes back. Lucky. Yeah, we'll definitely be interested in yeah, that. Well, yeah, a question yeah. from Alison um, in the chat, and she's asking, are the STI offices open for access? I mean, walk-in. Right, so that's a really good question, Alison. So all most services now are virtual by default. What that means is you've got to go online to book an appointment with us. We don't, have, we don't allow walk-ins. But it looks like over the next two or three weeks, we're going to be open access for um, for, um, go back to walk-ins. I mean, we're we're just with the formulating plans how we're going to work it. So once the once the country opens back up on the nineteenth of July, we uh, there's no reason for us to have a be virtual by default. So at the moment, you've got to go onto our onto a website to book an appointment, book a slot, and then get in. The good thing about booking the slots is you know when you're going to be seen. With walk-in services, you could be in our service for two to three hours. Four hours. hours wait. I prefer the um the appointment things. You know, just go yeah. in and come out. I prefer. But the it. problem is, the problem is, people aren't able to get appointments because people are booking them up early. You got to get in at a certain time, and then there's certain people that there's DNA appointments, so their appointments booked in and their DNA, and then people can't get in, which is an issue. Yeah. Right. But right. if you but if you but if you do want to do an STI screen, anybody, I recommend they want to do it. If you don't want to go to a clinic, you don't have to. There's a service called SHL London, Sexual Health London. If you type that into your um, browser and log in, you can do an online consultation. Just answer no to all the questions. Don't say you've got infection or any, or your partner's um, test, someone else's infection. Just put no to all the questions. They will post your STI tick, kit in the post. Do it at home, put it in the post. Two days later, you get all your results. Okay. So, so you, you don't even have to leave your house. So what do you have to do with the home test? So you just, um, so it's, a, it's a vaginal swab right. and, a, and, a, and a finger prick. The finger okay. prick, yeah. yeah. The finger prick's a bit hard, but what I say to people is run your finger under warm water for about three to four minutes right? and then do it, and then the blood will flow easy. It'll oh, okay. Quickly. Yeah. I must tell my mum yeah. that. Not because she's having sexual health checks, because she's <laughs> diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. throw my mum out there under the bus <laughs> in the streets um, <laughs> but yeah that's more or less all the questions I have for you it was really informative and a great show Very really appreciative that you came on and shared your expertise and your knowledge with us thank, thank you just, no worries I'll see you lot dancing in a few weeks wherever we are yeah you know you yeah. will see us dancing <laughs> up a storm somewhere <laughs> yeah. yeah cool all right, All right Gary. Nice to meet you. Oh, Have a good day. Yeah, look after Thank yourself, you. girls. You too. Right, Thanks, bye. Gary. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Yo. Damn. You didn't have much to say today. I was listening. I was like, rah. It was the 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 lice for me. Pubic yeah, lice. Like you shut that shot from that. <laughs> You've never heard of pubic lice, that? I've never heard of pubic lice. I was like, I actually don't know shit because I've never heard of pubic lice. And he said it so casually, never heard of it. I was like, wow. Um, and then the little dutty guy that did bring his girlfriend in 
and make her cry up a storm when he was the little duttiness. That was, um, <laughs> I was like, what a little rascal. But it just goes to show how people will work brain on you rather than tell the truth. They will work brain and, and have you feeling like, say, it's you. But she, she should have been able to figure that out, though, at some point. Like, if he's the only guy that you slept with, then it's you. But then if he test come back negative and he showed me the negative test, that's going to spin me. But I'm if... Like, what the fuck? How can yeah, you have it? Or if, yeah, I suppose you, your brain will do tricks on you because you think, oh, well, maybe it lay dormant or maybe... There was a mistake in it, um, so I had it from before. He hasn't got it. Da, 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 da. Really yeah. out of order. The yeah. trickery people will get up to, boy. I tell you. What did you find out today that you didn't know? Um, a few things. Let me think. Um, I didn't know that you were more susceptible to to, to infection if you had anal sex. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's good to know. Um I heard that a long time ago. Um, I heard that a long time ago that you're more susceptible to it. Um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that there was a possibility of pregnancy through anal sex. I didn't know that. That I would have never have um, gathered. I would have I never have said that. No. I didn't know that there was a community of young people that are having sex. Um, it, Cause it really just depends on how you view sex. Anal sex is sex. Mm -hmm. but they don't think they're having sex if they're having sex in their in their anus which um quite worrying yeah chem sex i didn't know about rainbow sex we never needed to know about <laughs> okay that made me like literally made me feel sick i i, I couldn't because i was like no i'd start heaving like an idiot on the live and start coughing and choking everywhere, actually doing it on the live. So he can't yeah. repeat that. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I felt like, I literally felt sick uh, when he said it. No. Like, no. And I try not to judge when it comes to sexual things because to each their own, isn't it? I know what my boundaries are, but to each their own. But when you start talking, then anyway. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> well um we haven't chopped up any memes this time this week we ain't chopped up any memes what grabbed we, your attention what grabbed week? my attention this week so let me get to it let me go and have a look so everyone has to bear with me a second because i'm using the 1940s pc um let's go where are we oh lord Okay. Uh, name one thing that destroys marriages. <laughs> Someone said marriage. <laughs> yeah, no, I was busting up. <laughs> I was busting up. So, <laughs> name one thing that... I actually posted it, but the one thing went over my head. Right. And then a guy called Ty Andrews laughed and said, it says one thing. And then I tried to style it out and said, well, I'm putting it all in one sentence. But I, di I didn't realise it was one thing. But I think it's a it's a majority of things. Um, we've got affairs, complacency, jealous friends, lies, misunderstandings, unrealistic expectations. That's from Amma. Um, poor communication, nightmare mother-in-law dry sex life sometimes okay. fertility issues sometimes a loss of a child or baby um i put complacency distrust infidelity money bad communication third party meddling disrespect <laughs> domestic violence physical emotional sexual incompatibility and i had more <laughs> but i didn't write it um a husband who cannot admit his mistakes or admit when he's wrong uh, martin abraham put the neighbor what does that mean? The neighbour. Oh, did they? <laughs> <laughs> Freesome with your friend. A husband who always deems his wife like to make himself feel better. Ty Andrew said, damn, let me get married first. Um, Sammy Joe said, addiction, gambling, drugs, constantly watching porn. Um, and Nate said that Sammy's a professional. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. She was like, 
Huh? She was right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tiffany interfering in Lord's Quinard comfortability. Uh, Rodney, no respect, deceitfulness, discussing your problems with other people. So there's just tons. Like we oh, got. You, whole... you know what? A couple of people said discussing your problems with other people. So let me yeah. ask you this, because I've heard guys say this a, a, a few times that um, you know, talking your business with your single friends. Mm -hmm. It's because your single friends want to keep you single. Um, like, do you agree with that? I've do got, you I've think been, discussing and getting opinions from other people is, uh, in regards to your relationship, is a, a bad thing or a good thing? Or uh, I think, again, it's energy. So sometimes it depends on the energy that it's done with. If you're just going to people just to blame and not really look for a resolution then no, it depends who you're going to it with as well and uh, their intention for you. But I don't think it's general, your, all your single friends, so any single friend you have doesn't want your relationship to work, that's bollocks. I've right. had friends, I'm single, I've had friends in relationship that have come to me in turmoil and I've tried to encourage them to work it out because looking at it from the outside, that's fixable, come on. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that's rubbish and I feel like even with us, if you're in a relationship or I'm in a relationship, we're just honest with each other when each other's wrong. Yeah, yeah. No, you are out of order. Don't say sorry, Nail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't think that's in general. I think if you can never keep things to yourself, that, or if that you've got sometimes maybe possibly keep something to yourself, um, there should be things that you should be able to work out between you because sometimes everything can become background noise or just noise yeah so you need to be able to figure at least some things out by yourself but i do think there is nothing wrong if you've got certain reliable people that will guide you right and sometimes if you are in a relationship you can feel a bit foggy then you should be able to speak to those to speak to your friend yeah yeah and i suppose at our age you're not going to have any friends around you that um no, I ain't got no idiot friends. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. No, I'm like, no idiot friends at all. So I think we're like, we're, we're good on that. They, we're good on that. We're good on that. But what do you think? All right, I'm trying to find mine. Hang on. Let me go into... I'm going to see if I can find mine. This floored me. I watched it twice and laughed my head off. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Uh, trust it? me. Huh? Hang on, let me find it. Let me find it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, guys, <laughs> wait for us because we usually have it on um, thing, but because we had Gary on today, it was centered around him. Hang on. Is there anything that you guys, any of the memes or topics that were posted in the last week that are stood out to you guys as well this week? Let us know. Let's chop it up. Or if you want to hop on quickly, let us know. All right. Um, oh, I wonder if it's going to... Hang on. Who po oh, who posted that? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me stop the share because it might not... Right. I think so tell me if you not can hear me now yeah all right oh hang on you might not be able to hear it oh maybe if i took this off all right so do you guys know can you hear boyfriend? Yeah. yeah yes okay. all right so can we test this loyalty is that okay yeah all right so can i have these two girls call your boyfriend on one of their phones and see if they'll be down in netflix and chill with your boyfriend behind your back is that okay yes all right yes okay. oh hang on Single. All right, you got the number, right? Yeah, let me find it. All right, bet. And call and put on speakerphone. Turn all the way up. Okay. But are you nervous, though? No, I trust them. Hey, David? Yeah. What are you up to? Nothing much. What are you doing? We're at O'Toole's. <laughs> are you busy right now? No, I'm not busy. What are you doing? I'm with Ashley. We're just, like, we're trying to leave, but, like, we don't have a ride. <laughs> Y'all can't call an Uber? No, can you come get us and we can like maybe hang out or something? We kind of want to see you. Oh, 
But like Gina can't find out, is that fine? Yeah, just don't tell her. Can we like come wow. here also and hang out? Like yeah, watch a movie, yeah, get yeah, food or something? Just make sure you don't tell her. We're not gonna tell her. If you don't tell I, her. No, I'm not saying shit. Okay. He said yes. He said yes. Are you fucking kidding me? Take the phone, take the phone. I thought we were like best friends since like what? Sixth grade? You're mad, you're mad, at, you're mad at them? Yeah, you're, I'm fucking pissed. No, you should be friend. mad at your man. That's your man. I mean, you guys called him though. Like, you're literally my best friend. It's crash crew. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's for a video though. It's for a loyalty check. Why are you mad at them? I mean, that's, 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 it's, it's, a two, it's a two way street. But, I don't know. But why do you even think to call him? We think he's like going behind your back or some shit. I but why wouldn't you just tell me that instead of going behind my back and call him? Wait, what do you, I, I told, I told him to call him. <laughs> this is for the, the, the video. I don't even have his number. That was the deal, y'all. Uh, <laughs> wait, hold I'm up. I'm so confused. Are, are, are you serious? Are, are yeah, you, I'm what, fucking pissed. What, what did they do, though? They called my boyfriend. <laughs> so, like, what if, if he's doing this with us, what about any other girl? I mean, you're right, but I just don't know why my best friends would even think to call him. Well, no, I told him to call him, though. But you, why? You said, yeah, we could call him. I didn't know you were going to ask the fucking... Hang out and say, make sure Gina doesn't just know. just trying to see, like, what he, he would say. Would. Okay, so what'd he say? He said he was he down said, to... He was he like, I'm on my way. He was, he down, was, to, he was down to cheat. Are you serious? I'm fucking serious. Honestly, I'm speechless. I really don't know what to say. Like, I'm just, like, really mind-blown that he even answered and then that you guys called him. Like, I'm kind of upset. I don't know how to feel. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Wait, why was she... <laughs> What, they didn't even do anything. <laughs> what the hell? No. All right, so look, are, are you single? No. Not single. How about you? Are you single? No. All right. So are you guys friends? Oh, hang on. Let me just cut this off now. So you must know her boyfriend, right? No. Is she okay? Is she okay? I couldn't believe the twist it took that she literally just switched on her friends. She said... <laughs> 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 she said... Ah. You can call blah, blah, blah. Then when the boyfriend was saying what he shouldn't be saying, she switched on her friends. She took it. Like, she couldn't take the embarrassment. Natty posted that. Thanks, Natty, for posting that. But, yeah. What did he put? Women. That's what yeah. it is. Because in this instance, I had to agree with him, though. Like, you really just stood there Knuckle and watched down. the whole thing play out and then switched on your friends. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Davina said that made me mad. I was so mad with her. But yeah, that that was what grabbed me. That was what grabbed me. That's but, yeah. Let's wrap up, my darling, because yes. yes, it has been two plus hours. Yeah. So, anything you're working on? What next is coming up on the 14th of August? Yes. Want to so. talk about that? Okay, so what next, as you all know, is the initiative um, that we have, and that is around building a sustainable, independent Black community in the following areas, uh, education, economics, property ownership, and um, education. So we've worked on it for about over, just over a year now. Um, we now have our next event, which will be a physical event, and that will be on the prestigious Viscount boat um, for, at Millbank Pier. So just as well, the boat is not going to bank there the whole time. We will be moving. So we will okay. do our tour around the Thames whilst we're doing the seminar and come back to Millbank, uh, Millbank Pier. We do it. We do <laughs> it. No, we do so, it. Yes, it's a Prosecco and mocktail reception and there'll be light canapes throughout the day. Um, and you can also, there's a bar that you can buy drinks and stuff from also. We've got early bird tickets out at the moment um, and tickets are available on Eventbrite. But if you add the event page, it's what next, um, your journey on into basically into property. property. Yeah, into property. So what what are benefits are people going to get out of this? What do you expect um, our patrons are going to... So we've got, we got our lead property panellists, so our lead 
with when it comes to property, property expert, which is Ali, who is putting this together um, as well. So he will be here with all his experience and guidance. So it's literally, they're here if you want to buy a property, whether it's for home ownership or whether it's for investment, then this is the event for you. This is on a personal level. We're also giving you more information on our property um, joint venture scheme. So the joint venture scheme is where we purchase a investment property together as a collective with the expert as the lead investor. And then we kind of make money from that and we keep doing that. So we keep buying investment properties as a collective. You can put in yeah. as, um, as little as £500 as your investment and you'll see your return. Um, so, yeah, that's a chance to sign up and get more information for that. And just long-term mentoring and all the information that you need, when it comes, especially when it comes to property finance, because that's a big um, yeah. hurdle for a lot of people, especially a lot of black people, is the finance. So this is where Ali comes in as well. So it's not just a guide and we kind of leave you there and that's it. It's long term. This, this is the first step of your journey onto property shares. And they plan to be with you along the, along that way. Along the journey. Yeah. You, yeah. Okay, so Davina's asking what date that is. So that's the 14th of August. Davina, you might as well just stay in London for the weekend because the following yeah. day is the barbecue. So yeah. <laughs> Remember you lot saw us at <laughs> the barbecue. He had yeah. one. Um, and the, the barbecue was fire, man. It was so good. Right. So I'm looking forward to part two. That's yeah. going to be on the 15th of August. Um, but prior to that, um, 24th of July, we're going to be having a cupcakes and cocktail, cocktails event Ooh. at my stockist. <laughs> So yeah, again, gonna be um goodie's gonna be the, the official DJ. Um and then we might have some other guest DJs pass through. We're not sure yet, but I have had some people hit me up and say they want to pass through and play. Um play, yes. Yeah, yeah we're gonna have some live models and some lifestyling events. Um cocktails will be free until they run out. <laughs> Cupcakes will be free until they run out. And we're just going to have a nice vibe. Um, you'll get to see our, the launch of our new collection, which consists of um, Nefertiti heads and angst and African maps and stuff like that. So we're getting ready to shoot that so that we can show you and launch it. So all big things planned. So, yeah, that's going to be 24th of July at my stockist fashion. This, um, what are they called? Fashion Capital, but it's called the Designer Collective, which are based yeah. on 113 to 115 Frontal Road. Um, and that's it for me now. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, also, at Cupcakes and Cocktails, they um, they get a voucher, don't they, when they register? They get a voucher when they register. If you um, register on Eventbrite, you can download your voucher. Thank you, Natalie. Um, and you get a £5 pound discount if you spend over 30 quid. And I also should mention that this event is sponsored by Savvy Cakes and Bakes, which is owned by the beautiful Natalie Gordon, who makes exquisite, exquisite, exquisite cake. They taste good and they look good. She does my birthday cake every year. She didn't do it this year because of... Um, I was surprised <laughs> and they forgot you that that's the truth but um but she does great cakes you find her on Instagram at Savvy Cakes and Bakes and on Facebook she's Natalie Gordon but that's her private page so just look for Savvy Cakes and Bakes but you'll get to taste some of her her greatness on um the 24th of July yeah that's it lovely so we've got yeah. we've got things going on man we've got things going on we got a lot of things going on so um yeah we hope to see you guys definitely hope to see you yeah um i feel like i say it every time we come on here you know you guys keep this group popping the comments the posting the interactions great i do need to remind you though that the group is for debate purposes only so when you send um other people's podcasts or you send um, music lives or just general promotions, those are going to be really posted on our page. Because although we want to support and promote you, we want to keep the group separate for debate purposes only. So if you can remember that, 
Um, yeah, just post any of your promotions to our page and we'll be sure to support that. Um, and that's it. Big ups to Proud and Gifted <laughs> for my t-shirt. I hope you're watching. If you're watching, Oren, thanks for the t-shirt and thanks for hooking us up with Gary. It was a good chat. It was a good chat. Yeah. It was a good chat. All right. I have nightmares, but it's a good chat. <laughs> Little lice. L look, crawling from your pubic hair to Rainbow your bum, kisses. from Lice. your bum. Oh God, to your. It, it seems like if you're a hairy man, you're in problems, boy. Because it'll go from your pubes to your chest, from your chest. I think he said it. Did he, did he say it goes to your eyebrows? But it just can't live in your hair. Well, I think he said it goes to your eyebrows as well. That I didn't know. I always thought pubic lice stayed in the area. In the pubic, like your lane, your pubic yeah, lice. Yeah, why are you all out in the eyebrows if you're pubic yeah. lice? I don't and get I it. And I mean, why are you still there if there's no pubes? Like, you don't know yourselves. I think they've got out of control and no one's put them in their place. So, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here we world. I'm a really yeah. pubic lice. <laughs> no, pu pubic lice isn't the um the the thing that bothers me because, like he said, uh, yeah, it would be very distressing to have it. But like he said, within two days with a shampoo treatment, they're dead. The um genital warts and herpes is what will bother me the yeah. most because you just. But what I didn't know that's another thing I didn't know is that we've all got it anyway. It's just it's for something to bring. Oh, yeah, 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 that I didn't know. That I didn't know. That I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. That I didn't know. That we've all got oh, yeah. learned, learned something today. Thanks, um, Gary. Gary. Thanks, gals. <laughs> yeah, thanks, gals. So now that we all know, know that we've got herpes and... Um, well, all the more reason to be having the conversation before you actually have sex. Have sex and if yeah. I do ha bring that up in conversation and you get offended with me, we won't be having sex. Yeah, it's... It's that simple. Yeah. It really is. But yeah. All right, pretty face. All right, Gorge. I'm coming for the earrings. Love you to the I'm moon. For the earrings. You want these? You don't wear earrings this big, though. No, I'd wear those. You'd wear those. What yeah. can we call these now other than um, Nefertiti? I want a different name. People in the chat, comment. If you can give me a good name that I can use. Because we name all of our pieces at Diva Choice. Give me a good name that I can use other than Nefertiti or Empress. We don't. We that is too. Yeah, it's yeah. it's too. Yeah, it's too obvious. obvious. Yeah. yeah. Give us a name, and you can win a pair. I'll post you a pair. If the person yeah. who comes up with the best name, I will post you a pair. Yeah. All right. Bye, crew. Love you. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you so much for, for tuning in. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that. Bye. Oh, you You're going to follow me anyway, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Bobs. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>